Alright everyone, hope you're all doing good today, hope you're all doing well. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix. Welcome on in from SGEQ. If you're, I guess, new to, I guess, Wednesday nights, uh, this is Speedruns from the Crypt. We do a lot of horror games and a lot of fun. And usually after the, uh, you know, the HEDQ, SGEQ events, I do like to, I guess, welcome you all in to, uh, well, I guess, horror block, essentially, or horror night. Uh, tonight, I have a fun collection of games. I kind of just picked some games I thought were pretty cool, some new, some old. They should all be fun, though, however. Uh, before we do kind of get into what we're exactly are doing tonight, I do just want to say that for GDQ News, GDQ will be going to PAX West, and the schedule will be coming out July 14th. You can use exclamation mark PAX for more information. Alrighty, anyway, to dive into the games we have for tonight, we're going to be having Dead Rising 2, the Granny Trilogy, and I want to say it still wakes the deep. Um, all, all of them should be fun, all of them are pretty unique, um, I guess most are newish, kind of, I guess 2010 onward, but... Just kind of a fun collection of horror games. Anyway, to kick things off, we'll be going to Dead Rising 2, and I'll be um, running the game for you. Uh, kind of a personal hello. And, uh, well, uh, that being said, we're doing a category called Time Skip New Game. The idea behind this is Dead Rising normally has a lot of waiting. This mod prevents that. So, instead of waiting for six hours, we will simply not do that. We're doing all the main missions, but we do get a pretty fun run. Uh, anyway, uh, time will begin once we do the motorcycle game. It'll happen in moments, but... Yeah, we should have something pretty fun here. As well, during these, I usually tend to read the, the Twitch chat, so if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. All right, anyway, uh, luckily, the game will count on for us. Three, two, one, and go. So, first things first, we have about a minute-long minigame. Uh, the idea behind this is it is motocross. You're playing as Chuck Green. He is a dad who does motocross. Um, this is usually a little bit random based on the spawns, hit balloons. Those are good. Uh, AI sometimes will want to take your points. You need to make sure you just win. It doesn't matter how much, you just need to win. Uh, a little bit of an auto scroller, but it does kind of set the scene pretty nice to kind of get us what we're needing to do. Uh, the reason why we need to win is because you get a cash prize that we don't care about, but more importantly, you get a minor amount of experience. Uh, that experience will come in handy because we want to be very precise on level ups later. Uh, since we are in a new game file, we'll be playing on very, very low stats. If you've never played a Dead Rising game, uh, they tend to be very difficult, and normally people will play at level 50, which is a much stronger file. Anyway, it's currently 30,000 to, um, had, I think I have more than all three of them combined, so we, we definitely won the intro. And uh, there we go. Also, yes, a new Dead Rising game did get announced, so it's quite fitting. It actually got announced during SGEQ. Uh, which would be like a remake, deluxe remaster of the first game. So I guess it's kind of fitting, isn't it? Anyway, now we're kind of getting into it. Uh, you'll see on the top left, uh, the PP power will be going up a little bit. I think that is prestige points in this one. I don't remember what it's exactly called, but uh, it's, it's something points. I think it's prestige in this one. Uh, we also have money. Uh, in this game, money doesn't matter whatsoever. It's just there. We don't have to worry that much about it. Uh, but the HUD's pretty simple. Uh, anyway, the fastest way to win immediately uh, in this next section, the, you know, speed and strat, we're just going to die. Uh, it's just to find your daughter and take her to safety, but that's slow. So instead, we're just going to wait here and get grabbed from behind. And the zombie's going to, you know, uh, chew on Chuck until he dies. Uh, a little bit of RNG right in the beginning of the run, but otherwise, it's not so bad. Which is kind of funny, because, like, you're supposed to carry your daughter out of here. She's supposed to, like, stay nice and safe. And then you get a cutscene where she pulls you to safety. So she's the real hero here. Like, you'll see her, like, right here, I think. We're just like, wake up! Because apparently just, you know, her dad passed out immediately out of fear. Which, I mean, that's kind of relatable. See? There she is. She just, hey, look, we did it. We carried her to safety. We saved the day. We're a hero. Um, you could do the prologue. It just It's a longer run where usually it's just faster to immediately die. Uh, anyway, we get to see time skip in action. Normally, you have a lot more time to play around the mall, but you can see on the right, uh, Fine Katie's Ombrex is going to be a lot shorter. We're on red time already. Uh, like I said, all this mod does is it prevents waiting. Waiting is not that fun. It is like... Normally, the game runs on two-hour cycles, where every day is like two hours, and it's about, I think, 72 hours, give or take. So, it would be a lot of waiting. 
Uh, also, for the uh, benefit of the audience here, I have turned off the radio sound effect. It will happen quite a lot. Uh, I found there was an option, so whenever you see urgent, we just will simply ignore that because, well, I don't even want to hear beeping the whole time. <laughs> I don't think most people want to hear beeping the whole time. Uh, we're now going to get into the first of our major movement techs. We're going to be having a couple. Uh, we're going to break into the shop right here. This will have skateboards and a gun. We're going to be taking one gun and three skateboards. Now, skateboarding is very important to Dead Rising. Uh, it is the fastest way to move around. However, Dead Rising 2 is a little bit floaty. Uh, so, it's a little bit awkward to control. And zombies are also massive, as is the skateboard hitbox. It's a little bit weird. So, you can see right there, I kind of hit him out of nowhere. Uh, I have to be a little bit careful because skateboards in this game only have four health. Meaning if I hit four things, the board will break. The more it breaks, the worse that will be. So I'm trying to make sure I avoid as many hits as possible. Anyway, here is our first round of actual combat. We're going to take this gun and just kind of shoot them roughly in the neck or head about three times each. We don't need the gun anymore. We just need to kill these three dudes. Uh, this is how we get Zombrex. It's like medicine that prevents zombieism that apparently costs like... $500 or something back in the day, and that's just be really expensive, which I don't know if that's expensive nowadays. I'm pretty sure it might be. Anyway, we recruit Denise. She's a pharmacist. We just use her for experience. I'm going to uh, grab this cart, jam it on a wall, and now we're hitting uh, a fun trick here. This is called ghost boarding. So, you know all that stuff I said about avoiding zombies? Yeah, I don't need to do that. Uh, whenever you ram an item into a wall, you can just sort of uh, turn into a ghost, and you're able to board through literally everything. Uh, it does work quite well for what we wanted to do here. Uh, normally, you would have to avoid them. This way, we just sort of board through them. Now, they can still grab you, but ideally they won't. And in this case, they did not. Uh, I do want to make sure I keep these boards for a while. Um, we're going to get a magazine soon that will help, but it's very important that we don't lose the board as we play. Uh, we can get more boards as we go, but ideally I would not want to refresh too much. So good boarding is very important. Uh, there's also going to be some minor tricks you can do to help with that. Uh, and it actually hits weird because I imagine a lot of you probably watched, uh, you know, the Elden Ring run that was just happening. Uh, I know a lot of Souls games use similar tech, and for this game I have a very awkward setup, which if you've ever wondered, uh, a lot of Souls runners adopt something called the Claw Grip. Uh, it's an awkward thing where you play the game in a certain way so you can get to more buttons that you wouldn't normally be able to with a traditional grip. Uh, anyway, the Claw Grip here is kind of important because it allows you to do a weird thing, which is you can immediately dismount and get back on the board. And, oh, I'm going this way, I guess. Uh, this is going to be helpful because I can test it like right here. Um, you can just immediately stand back up. Normally there's this long, hey, he has to get off the board. Uh, we don't want to do that. So instead, if I were getting an award of zombies, what I can do is just that. And hey, look, my board is sick. Uh, NPCs do follow you more easily. Uh, luckily for us, though, we don't have to worry about them. Uh, there are categories that exist uh, designed around that. However, we don't really need most of the NPCs in this game. Uh, they are good for a little bit of experience, but not enough that warrants taking them back entirely. Uh, we will engage with mainly just Denise. Uh, she's kind of the only one that's like immediately on the way. Like in theory, you could talk to Lashandra and Gordon. They spawn right in the beginning, but for the most part, Denise gives you more than enough. You don't want to get too high level because we're trying to hit it in a very precise time. And yeah, the Resident Two is a fun time. Yeah, kind of just like move over, and it's 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 awkward to get used to, but it's kind of fun. And we've actually kept all the boards so far. Yeah, like whenever I play, I'm pretty much holding it like entirely my index finger on skateboarding the whole time, and then the ability to move over to the other side. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna jump through the zombies. I'd rather not break my other board here. <laughs> I kind of went further to the left than I wanted to when I wasn't paying attention to the screen. Luckily, we're still doing more than fine. We're at the door, and now we're getting to an escort mission. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit weird because there's a fun trick you can do here, and also we're getting our first of the magazines. Uh, magazines in Dead Rising are important because they allow you to get buffs on certain items and mechanics. So in this case, I've got a skateboarding magazine, we have the power to jump, and we also have the power to just have a better board. Uh, right now, I'm going to steal this uh, part. Utility card. Okay, we're stealing this from that guy, 
And what I want to do is I want to create a wall. I don't want Rebecca uh, entering this area. So I want to block her entirely. Can't let her through. And I want to spill the talker. It looks like she's ignoring the wall. That's unfortunate. But if you block her early, that'll prevent her from just fully going down this. And hopefully we'll see more Dead Rising stuff if the uh, Deluxe Remaster does well very soon. Uh, also, we can have a fun outfit. This is really one of the only areas that we have a lot of downtime. This is one of those runs that early game is a lot of setup. Late game, we start really getting into it. And there's going to be quite a lot of combat as we go. But uh, we can change into Chuck's underwear. He just has, like, heart boxers. Sweet. I think it's supposed to be, like, a Ghouls and Ghosts reference, but apparently Ghouls and Ghosts doesn't have hearts. It never had hearts. I never knew that when I was a kid. Like, when I played Ghouls and Ghosts, I always thought when Arthur got hit, he, you know, got thrown into heart boxers. They're not hearts. They're strawberries, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. Like, yeah, double check them. Although, I guess you're doing a lot more looking at men's underwear than you probably wanted to. But, I don't know. I just got something neat fact while we just look at Chuck. Anyway, I'm going to kill a bunch of zombies. Uh, the reason why is because we're waiting for Rebecca. And Dead Rising 2 is a little bit different, where you get very minor tidbits of XP per zombie kill. So, the more you get, you can actually end up getting just, like just enough to carry you over. Uh, Rebecca is getting a little bit violent, but usually she's pretty good. Uh, all right, that's pretty good there. We can just drive the cart here. Well, I should have a fun trick with the cart later, and it's gonna be really stupid. Uh, we'll be doing that like near, I think, case seven, case six, and it will be the absolute dumbest speedrun skip you'll ever hear. Or probably not the dumbest dumbest, but like, it'll be pretty dumb. Okay, so we're almost done with the Rebecca section. Uh, we're going to be setting up a fun glitch here. I'll be going back into ghost boarding. So make sure we avoid her, keep the board safe. And Rebecca normally follows pretty well. They made survivors a lot smarter in this one, as we mentioned earlier. So that'll give me plenty of time as she runs over here. Well, I'll take this cart and set up right next to that door so we can ghost board on the way back. Uh, I should mention as well for ghost boarding, if you want to try it at home, it works in any Dead Rising 2 based game. So Case Zero, Case West, Off the Record, anything it will work you just take a pushable item and then you jam it into a wall however it will only work with whatever item you're holding so it's a little bit awkward but it's a cool glitch and you don't really use it in other games as much because uh the boards aren't nearly as weak uh well in this game they're made out of paper like we cap at 12 health which is pretty bad so go sporting it is there you go and yeah, From the Crypt is a fun show. I usually plan a lot of different uh, horror stuff. Zombies place in RNG spots for run. Yes, zombies are entirely RNG. Uh, they're never consistent. They almost always will be random. So you can get good zombie halls, which is empty. But you can also have be packed zombie halls, which, um, you know, if you're trying to board, it gets bad. Uh, luckily, in this game, we actually do um, pass some of the downsides of this. So it's not all bad. We actually have a little bit of platforming. Uh, the reason why is because Katie needs Zombrex. She needs her Zombrex every day. So, uh, as a result of this, we need to go on uh, various grabs to make sure we have enough Zombrex. Uh, the first of which we'll be getting right up here. Uh, this is always right here. It's kind of hidden throughout the mall. Uh, the alternative is you have to spend, I think it's like, I think it starts at either $50,000 or $20,000 uh, to buy Zombrex. So it's much easier to find it. And we routed in uh, the different Zombrex pickups. Um, it is similar and off the record. Uh, this is another version, like similar game, same version, but a little bit different where you have the Zombrex, but they're in different spots, and you can more manually use it. Also, look, there's Denise. She's just sort of chilling. She'll make it back eventually, I bet. Probably. She's been trying to catch up this whole time. Also, I think this is a great example of just how long survivors will live if you just don't touch them. Like, we've kind of been running this for, like, what? I think we got Denise maybe three minutes in, and it's been, like, maybe eight minutes or so, and, uh, she's just bolting. <laughs> she's just still going. So she does live quite a long time. All right, so we're back in the safe house. Uh, time skill will be kicking into action. A lot of times in a fast forward or going into the night, the zombies are getting stronger. And we're going to be hitting the next of our major cases, 2-2, Ticket to Ride. So, um, lore-wise, uh, you're accused of terrorism or something? Zombies, you let zombies out. And people are trying to rob Vegas, so that's bad. Don't let them rob Vegas. So you are trying to stop them from doing that. It's pretty simple. It doesn't have all that much to it barring that. So we need to find TK's goons and we need to uh, pretty much stop his plans. This first one's going to be having a train, which um, 
Puck is going to be kind of a monster. Uh, even more so, I talked earlier how there's going to be certain points where I want experience to uh, be very precise. Uh, this is the reason why we've been doing all our setups. We're finally getting the point where it's, hey, okay, why have you been like doing all this stuff early? And it's starting to pay off. So I mostly have a full bar. I'm like, what, about 60% on the way to level two. Every time you level up, you get an upgrade and you also get uh, a full heal. So we want that full heal and hopefully we get a good upgrade. There are good upgrades and bad upgrades. We want range damage or stock, ideally stock. Stock is the best because that means we get more items, meaning I can hold more things, which is very good. Uh, anyway, to start things off, more Zombrex. We're going to go up here. There's a Zombrex hidden right behind the stage. Uh, it's also pretty good with the skateboarding. This is why we want to keep the jump. Uh, you do a little neat platforming here, which I, I used to go like a really weird path, but then I learned from like a runner named Nelly Q that there's actually a really easy way of doing that where you just jump there, which it's it's kind of funny because sometimes you do really convoluted things and the answer is much easier, right? Anyway, we have one of the Zombrexes. We'll be getting about one more, and then we're good to go. Katie will live forever. Or, you know, however long the Zombrex will keep her alive, I guess. We're also going to be hitting the first of the optional boss fights. We will be ignoring it. Uh, the main reason why is because we don't really need anything from that fight. Uh, normally, you have Snowflake the Tiger and Ted the Handler. Um, Ted's pretty easy to kill. Snowflake is hard to save. Uh, however, we're just going to abuse this fact, and we can teleport about in the middle of the arena, which uh, actually takes us where we want to go. So say goodbye to Snowflake the Tiger. She is sweet. Uh, in the meantime, we actually want to go right up here because there is another Zombrex, and there's also an LMG. I missed the jump. Aww. Uh, I'm glad I'm not getting shot because they can hit me in midair. Okay. So, we're now doing pretty good on our boarding and our guns. Um, hopefully the board doesn't break. All right, good. Okay, the LMG is really strong. Uh, there are like certain LMGs around the map and you can only grab one. So, they have like 200 bullets and are very strong weapons. It's almost always worth having an LMG. It also combos into other weapons. It's funny because the big thing about Dead Rising 2 is the game's combo system. We're never going to use it. Like, combo weapons are good, but they're not that good. Uh, it is almost entirely better for us to find other weapons, which is mostly guns. Uh, it's kind of funny, because when you first play Dead Rising, you think guns are weak, and then you start speedrunning Dead Rising, and you realize they're busted. Uh, anyway, since this is a hotfix episode here, uh, what I'm actually going to do is play it safe. We're going to save it. Uh, let's do file one. Um, this is going to be one of the harder missions. It can go wrong, uh, but we're about to begin combat. So we're going to have the LMG... And we have to fight TK's goons. The best way of fighting them is we're going to get about bursts of three in the head or so. So I try counting to three, and I just aim for the head. Uh, usually they'll die. Uh, this one's pretty rough. As long as I manage to help, I should be fine. They do be a little stunned. How are you not dead? There we go. And one more. Uh, what? Okay, we got it. All right. So uh, that's part one. Part two, you need to chase the train on a bike. Hey, remember I was a motorcyclist? This is the only time in the game it matters. So, uh, we do have a little bit of a lineup. I saw I waited. I didn't really start going. If you start going too fast, they'll throw, like, trash at you and it slows you down. Oh, no, Denise is dead. Whatever will we do? Don't worry. For Denise, I'll make the sweet jump. Uh, so I'm just going to start angling right about here, and that should be good on the jump. I whiffed it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? That's why maybe Denise died. She, she knew I would miss the jump. She had a feeling. She's ashamed of us now. Oh, that's how you make a save. All right, we're going to have to time it weird. That's fine. We'll just ride on the right side. There should be something coming up. And normally, if you do that, it's fine. Uh, okay. Wait, really? Oh, my God. Dude, TK's goons are cracked. Camera on the right or left here. Also, you do take damage roll up here, so hopefully I can just... Nope. Okay, this is going wrong very fast. <laughs> A lot of what I mentioned about things like slowing down, uh, the trash. Uh, I'm also taking a lot of damage, so we hopefully should be fine. Luckily, I didn't make that save. Uh, is there any chance I make this jump? Oh my god, I did. Why do I make that jump, but like the one that I... I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not going to ask so many questions. Let's play it safe. So immediately start firing. This guy's going to kill me otherwise. Um, also play it safe. Um, or not. Okay, now play it safe. 
I have no idea why in the world that guy did that. Okay, well, it worked out. We're not dead, we're about to level up, and we're gonna see what we get. The healing is nice, but the more important thing is the fact that we want level two by the time we begin the next mission. So I should get it right there, I can skateboard to the end, and I got stock. Combo card, oh my god. So, I got the worst RNG. You know, that's about expected. But we did it. Uh, anyway, I talked a little bit earlier about that one really dumb trick. So, we're gonna we're gonna drive this car, but we're gonna do a speedrun skip. We're gonna drive fast. What does that mean? I'm holding the gas button twice, once on my uh, controller and once on the keyboard. That makes it go double the speed, twice as fast. It's really dumb. I don't know why it works. But for this vehicle, you go really, like, really quick. And it's one of the weirdest things in the game. Uh, what we're actually going to do right now as well is I'm going to crash into this guy. I will then steal the shotgun. Uh, we are going to need that shotgun. It's very effective. And uh, then we can just take this all the way up. Uh, I don't know why this works. It's like one of those things that I think it's like a speedrunner's dream where you just hold forward twice and you go double the speed. Uh, I, I'm... Game. Game. What? Alright, there's a lot of goofiness in this game right now, but you know what? You know what? We got through, that's fine. Okay, so we have the Brandon fight coming up. We're ignoring it. It's not from a boss fight. Uh, it is going to spawn us in there, though. It's, it's something just with the timing of the game and how we take this route. Uh, it's so much faster to go this way, so now we can just leave uh, Brandon. We can say bye to him. You can enjoy his song for, like, all of five seconds. And now we are hitting one of the hardest cases in the game. Uh, Boomtown, or I think it's called Run for the Money. Uh, the goal of Run for the Money is TK will have his goons raiding the casinos. Instead of on train, they're now at the vaults. So you need to go to every single vault. And also, yes, there's absolutely the Austin Powers. I, I wasn't going to do the Austin Powers. I wouldn't have gotten out in time. So uh, I have the LMG. I have a shotgun and one skateboard. Uh, normally, Run for the Money is also a... All right, there we go. I normally run for the money as a case where you want to refresh your boards, and we're going to have to play it a little bit weird because of that. Also, we put Chuck in this outfit because it's funny. That is the sole reason. We had time to wait for Rebecca, and you know what? I thought it would be funny. Uh, we actually do end up using that car tech a few times throughout the run, though. Uh, we use it there to get back to the safe house. Uh, and then later on, we'll be using a, more of it when we get Rebecca. Because uh, we're going to have to escort her at one point. Which, you remember Rebecca earlier? She was the, you know, we tried blocking her off. We're, we'll see more of her as the run goes on. It was anyway, we gave Katie her Zombrex, because she needs her Zombrex every day. And now we're officially on Run for the Money. Uh, I can make a save. I'll probably time, I'll try to time around the Yucatan. You could do it earlier, but hopefully we should be fine. Uh, normally, the main problem is actually the Yucatan, funny enough. Uh, which, um, normally, I'm, if I'm mentioning weird names, these are the casinos. So we have Royal Flush Plaza, we have Americana, we have Yucatan, we have, uh, I think it's Slot Ranch. And then we have the Palisades. Uh, these are just different locations. Um, a lot of Dead Rising 2 is based on what casinos you can go to. You want the Banana Hammock. I don't think we have passed it, because I think that's in the Palisades only. You can have the Daisy Dukes, but I, I don't know if uh, Twitch chat wants to see Chuck in his Daisy Dukes. There's a strong reason. Also, hello. I can always ask our, uh, our GDQ tech if you would like to see uh, Chuck in the Daisy Dukes. Uh, anyway, it is run for the money. Board health does not matter as much. Instead, uh, I am able to very, uh, very much use this LMG to the maximum potential. Uh, I want to make sure I kill all these goons for safety. Uh, one more back here. You don't have to kill them all, but it's one of those things that you'd rather not get shot the whole time. Uh, I don't need this gun anymore, so we can just shoot the drill entirely, and we are now going to ditch it after I steal a coffee creamer. Uh, as well, uh, right here. We're getting new boards, so the boarding, I could be a little bit more generous. Okay, it's not like Twitch chat would like to see Chuck and his Daisy Dukes. I don't normally do this. Normally I do the boxers. Nice. Oh yeah, this is something I mentioned as well about the game being floaty. Uh, it is really rough on like input lag, I think it's called. 
Like if you get grabbed on a board, Chuck will be forced back into boarding and it's really awkward, which is why you want to immediately dismount sometimes. Uh, anyway, I think they're right here. Here, you may have Chuck in his Daisy Dukes. What the hell? What the hell indeed, Chuck? What the hell indeed? Who likes short shorts? Possibly Twitch chat. Actually, I think it's definitely Twitch chat. Okay. So, a new boards. We're going to grab two, and I need to make these boards last for the rest of the game. We will have, you know, some new tech coming up, but for now, the board these are the last boards we will be grabbing. So I need these to last a good while. Uh, pretty much for all of Run for the Money. Once Run for the Money is done, we'll be having some new strategies, and I think you're all going to like it. Uh, I know everyone here is a fan of speedrunning, so you'll get to see some real speedrun action. Also, there's a minor trick called uh, moon jumping. We don't really do a lot of it, but it's there. Uh, Dead Rising 2 is much more floating than Dead Rising 1. It's also a very floaty game in general. Like Dead Rising 1 is very snappy. You have a lot of freedom in your movements. This game is very restrictive. It's a nice game. It's, it's between the two of them. It's the much more restricted game. All right. Uh, so the shotgun's really good against uh, TK's goons. I don't know why. They kind of die in one hit uh, almost entirely, no matter where you hit them. So as long as you're remotely aiming, you're fine. Uh, it's kind of weird as well, because like even the range you can get it from is kind of awkward. Like sometimes the bullets will entirely spray. And this is why we grab the shotgun. Uh, for the drills, I'm just going to be using the goon guns in order to uh, break that down. And for safety, how about we chug a bottle of whiskey? Uh, don't try that at home. It's probably not going to give you the result you want. Chuck Green is a monster. That's why he can do it. I don't think Twitch chat is full of monsters. At least I, I hope not. So uh, don't don't chug a bottle of whiskey. A straight Jack too. Like my God, Chuck. Although Chuck Green's also a father who's giving his daughter a live tiger. <laughs> like in Snowflake the tiger, you can save Snowflake and then give it as a gift to Katie, and then Chuck will just you know, give his daughter a live tiger and then leave her alone. Like, luckily it works out, but uh, admittedly, if I was a father, maybe I wouldn't leave my daughter with a live tiger. Just saying. Okay, so now we're in the Yucatan. We do have a safety save nearby, but I might be able to play this pretty well. We have been doing pretty nice. I have plenty of shotgun ammo. Uh, so normally I like cutting through this little shop and we'll be having some guys here, but, you know, marathon safety and all that. Just in case, we'll be hitting up the men's room. Thanks. And we'll make a save right here. I don't normally make this one, but we got this one. Also, I am playing on a PS4 controller. If you go to the Dead Rising 2 speedrun.com page, uh, we do have resources to help you get controllers working. It's a bit of a janky board. Okay, so I'm off the board, and now it's time to kill. Uh, once again, I just need all the goons dead, and we are good. I've got seven shots. And I have about maybe five of them in there. I am taking a lot of damage already, so hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, I did get a double kill, apparently. That guy just died to a stray bullet, and I have one more. Uh, that guy just lobbed me a grenade. I don't know why he did that, but uh, now, yeah, look, he's dead. And I need this gun. Okay, so not only are we going to chug a full thing of whiskey, we're also going to, uh, you know what, let's be, let's be nice. We're going to need a full cake. Actually, I wanted the. Uh, you know what's fine. Uh, here's what we shall do. Uh, how about we play a little bit safe? And we'll, uh, oh, wait a minute. I can't do that. Uh, I'll grab the hot dog on the way. Okay, so we have the LMG. We broke the vault. Um, right now, what's going to happen is we have one more to go. Uh, this last one is going to be a van that's robbing the. Oh, God. Uh, I don't even remember the name. The Atlantica. Uh, and the Atlantica is probably the hardest part about this. Uh, let me just tell you, let me just set the scene. We have a wide open strip area and TK's goons have hit scan and they can hit you around the whole map. So uh, Dead Rising 1 has the Servot costume. This one does not, I don't believe. I think off the record brings it back, but I don't remember if this one had it. So, here's the dilemma. Uh, TK will have some uh, some of his goons on the left side here. I want to ignore that. So I'm going to hug the right, and we're going to play it very safe. Uh, in addition to that, I, uh, I'm about to break this board, so I don't mind trading it out for a little food. So we're going to do that. I'm going to grab a hot dog just in case we need it. It's the emergency hot dog. It's like, the you know, the 4th of July was recently. It makes sense. Uh, anyway, like I said, his goons will pretty much hit you no matter where you are. 
So, I'm going to position myself right here behind this wall, and I'm just going to hope they don't hit me. If I need to heal, I can, but we're just going to uh, fire the whole gun right here. Uh, there is pretty big RNG on whether or not TK will be fighting, or TK's goons will be fighting uh, either you or the zombies. If I fight the zombies, that's good. And Run for the Money is done. That is probably the hardest mission in the whole game, and I don't need the LNG anymore. All right, good stuff. Uh, so, we will be eating the emergency hot dog. It'll be nice. But that was pretty good. It was pretty safe. Uh, uh, continue playing. We're almost going to say goodbye to our skateboard friend, and we'll be trading in for new stuff. Uh, right now, we're going to have a little bit of a gamble. And uh, what's going to happen is we have to do the source. Uh, the source is going to be a level with a boss fight. So here's the plan. The boss fight will give me two levels. Uh, in Dead Rising 2, there's a wide pool of randomized stats you can get. However, it's still pooled, so it's like about, I think from levels 1 through 10, it's one giant pool. Uh, also, we're grabbing the juice boost, and I think that's all I need right now. So, I'll be level 4 by the end of this boss. I'll be having two upgrades. What that means is I have a good chance to get stock twice. Stock is good, as is ranged damage. Ideally, I would like to see two stocks doesn't always happen. So, I would like to see one stock at least. The gamble I'll make is I'm making I will get at least one stock. So, I'm going to make the preparations based around that. First things first, we have a boss fight coming up, so I will be grabbing the gun right here. Uh, LNG always spawn as long as you don't have an LNG on you, so it's still here. Uh, next, we are finally going to be ditching the skateboard. Say goodbye to our skateboard friend. Uh, in lieu of that, we're going to be having probably one of the best things about this run. It is going to be Quick Step. So, we're going to be doing a terrible combination of things. Once again, don't uh, don't try this at home and all that. Uh, we'll be having wine and beer combined, and a lot of it. Also, wine and wine. These are mixed drinks. Uh, the mixed drink system is if you combine two items, uh, what will happen is you can create different drinks that will give you different effects. So in this case, uh, wine and beer, or even wine and wine, will make you a drink called Quick Step. Uh, Quick Step is very good. It allows you to run very fast. Uh, it gives you faster movement speed than the skateboard, uh, albeit it is going to be a little bit weird. So uh, I'm going to find all these wines. I'll take two of these, and we're actually going to dump them right there. So I'm just going to grab these and just throw them right there for later. And what we're going to do is... Wait, do I have enough? Uh, let's do this. Uh, one more toss. You know what? I banked on three. Let's do it. So we're going to drink one now, and this is going to give me the movement speed I need. And if we're no longer having skateboards, this is now a juice run. So this is going to be good for a lot of things. Uh, I'm level two, and I'm currently fighting a mid-game boss that probably wants you to be about level 20. So you can see the dilemma here. Uh, having movement speed is very important. The game does not want you to be at this point in time. Like, if you've ever played a Dead Rising game, it's very hard. Uh, we're fighting the twins. This is case five. So the strategy is gold or silver. We're fighting gold because gold is closer. Uh, also known as amber and crystal. Uh, the strategy here is to uh, kind of keep her within range. Uh, I don't want her to get too far. As well, I'm not holding down the button. I'm kind of just like tapping it. Uh, the main reason why is because I don't want to waste all my bullets. There's like minor damage debuffs. Anyway, really good fight. Uh, and I still have about 40 bullets left. Now here's the gamble. I really want two stocks and I got none oh my god I got basic attack damage increase and it, oh my god that was the worst possible energy you can have <laughs> okay no I got ranged attack okay I got one decent thing okay this is really awful not the end of the world we'll make it work but this is really bad <laughs> so uh, I gambled and lost immensely meaning half the drinks I made didn't matter uh, anyway uh, here's what we can do. Uh, we're actually going to toss out the gun, and we'll be grabbing that later. Uh, we'll take as many of the Spitfires, or sorry, the Quick Steps as we can. Um, normally you'd want that gun because it's going to be pretty good at killing TK's goons later. However, we can improvise. This definitely loses time if you lose this gamble. Uh, in case you're wondering, what's the good result? You get two stock at this point, so you would have six total and not four. Um, what you should expect is probably at this point you get at least one stock. Uh, I'd be able to have the perfect uh, layout. I mean, I'd be down one quick step, but it's not the end of the world. Now I have no gun. I have no quick step. So we're going to have to improvise. It's not too bad, luckily. Like, all three of these are there. Hey, that's 
That's how GDQ works. Every time you do anything, all right. I want to. I want to let you all know if you're a uh, prospective speedrunner, you want to get into you know speedrunning. Let it be known if you ever do anything for GDQ or any live-based event, you will get the worst RNG possible. You will never get anything good. <laughs> Always expect the worst. Um, it is never a good time in terms of. I, it's a good time for doing the run. It's never a good time for your RNG. Uh, anyway, this isn't going to be a problem. Uh, the main difference is I'm going to have to probably just detour and grab a pistol. Uh, pistols aren't as fun as the LMG. The LMG is really good at taking out uh, TK's goons, uh, as you saw earlier. But we should be fine. Also, there's a boss fight right there. We're going to ignore him. There isn't all bosses category, so don't worry if you like the bosses. Like, people do do them. It's just, we're not going to do them here. Also, if you're wondering why we're using Quick Step, Quick Step in this game will last a long time. I think in Dead Rising 1, it was 30 seconds and you can get up to one minute. And this game, it lasts one minute. So with the Juice Boost, you can get times two. So if you have uh, plenty of these, you can essentially have like six minutes of running fast. You don't have to worry about bad boarding. Uh, you can just go the whole time and it is much, much faster. It's also much safer uh, because Walking through zombies, Chuck's pretty good at that. Uh, when you actually start kind of going through them uh, without that, it's not nearly as safe. Uh, anyway, we gave Katie or Zombrex. So we have a mission up here. It's going to be called Stakeout. This is just... Oh, TK has a helicopter. Stop him. Pretty much, TK is up to no good. That is that is all of the run. TK has TK is doing something, and you want to stop TK. No, we're not fighting Carl. Uh, there is a category that does it. It is all bosses. Uh, it gets ran a lot more on Off the Record, the uh, Frank West version. But it's kind of funny because you have two similar games. You have Dead Rising 2 Off the Record and Dead Rising 2 Base. And um, the runs are wildly different as a result. And because in Off the Record, the boards are the exact opposite. Also, it is. That it is. I grew it myself. Yeah, there's a lot of quick steps. So if you have like any running emotes, someone's running fast, you are more than welcome to post them as we just start sprinting. Uh, I, I mentioned speedrunning is the name of the game here, and Chuck really believes in speedrunning. It's kind of fun, too, because I think everyone's first guess with Dead Rising and, like, fast is usually Quick Step. So I think this is, like, the only one that really utilizes this. There's one category in Dead Rising 1 that does it, but for the most part, you don't really get to see Quick Step in action. So it's kind of nice that you have a whole category dedicated around a Quick Step. Which is kind of funny, because you just have to make a bunch of them and then keep them in your inventory. Anyway, here's the fun part. Remember how I mentioned inventory management? So, we need a very precise amount. One, I want to keep the quick steps as much as I can. Two, I need to make sure that I grab, you know, a nice gift for Katie, a toy spitball gun. Uh, this is very important. It's kind of goofy. You don't, like, normally you wouldn't imagine much with a toy spitball gun. This is just, like, you know, a toy. It's a toy gun. Uh, it doesn't do any damage to zombies or anything, but it has a unique property. And I'll explain it in one moment. Just understand, for the upcoming boss fight, we need this gun. And this is going to be one of the weirdest interactions, and this is probably going to be one of the best things you can do in this game. Uh, this is going to be pretty funny. Okay, so at this point, the snipers spawn in, and it's hilarious because we're never going to interact with them. I think this is like the only time we end up in this area. There's Big Earl. He's not that big. He's lying to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Twitch chat. But Big Earl is not very big. He's actually quite, like, average. It's funny, because they have a character called Derek, who is big. And I don't know why they didn't call him Big Earl. But it is what it is. Uh, anyway, uh, here's what we'll do. There's a pistol right here, and can I hit TK's... You know, let's play it weird. Uh, I want to keep that quick step, so let's do this. All right, so about three shots to do this. Also, I'm getting shot. I'm whipping a lot of these. Wait, what am I doing? Propane! Uh-oh. Uh, you know what? I have an idea. Let's play it nice and safe. Playing a little bit awkward because I want to keep this quick up, but honestly, it'd be better if I just did this. Okay, so I had propane help me. Uh, I need to get their gun. And one more. How are you not dead? All right, dead. All right, we did it. Uh, I don't need anything else there. We are now good to go. We're going to dodge this guy, and now it is time for the boss fight. So, here is a helicopter. Uh, we need to feed a whole helicopter. I don't have any guns, but you know what? 
I have a spitball gun. And uh, apparently spitball guns are strong in helicopters, so we're just gonna launch the bullets directly into the rotor blade. And uh, yeah, it's gonna tear it apart. Uh, normally you can kill it pretty well. And oh, hey, look, it's dead. Toy beats helicopter every time. So if you're wondering why does that work, normally the spite is pretty kind to throwable weapons. Uh, it doesn't want you to be totally screwed if you try doing it, like you run out of guns. Uh, there's like little lamps at the top and you're supposed to throw those into the rotor blade and does a sizable amount of damage. But with the way the game's coded, for some reason, uh, every projectile from like a toy gun uh, counts as a lamp. So essentially, I have a gun firing a bunch of lamps directly into the rotor blade, which is funny that that works. Um, it also works in off the record, but use a different gun called the ray gun, and it dies even faster because it just has a better fire rate. And it's really goofy, but it's kind of funny. That'll always work. It's a toy spitball gun or ray gun playing Dead Rising 2 off the record. And it's pretty strong. Okay, so we are now officially in the late game. Uh, we have gas zombies. Uh, I also got a single stock. Uh, I'm losing the gambling RNG pretty badly right now. But it's not the end of the world. So, what do gas zombies do? They suck. Uh, they spit on you and then they grab you. Uh, and they're pretty bad. They will stun you for a long period of time. So, this is why quick step's also good. They also swarm you pretty heavily. Uh, we are hitting the point of the run, though, that I do need to make more quick step. Uh, there always will be little bits in time. Normally, it's last stand and then a later mission. Uh, so we're going to take three coffee creamers, and we're going to be mixing coffee creamer and orange juice, which I don't know if that's good or not. Like, maybe? That could just be an orange Julius or something, but, like, I, I can't imagine that's the greatest combination. Uh, anyway, in terms of upgrades, I have one more chance to get stock six. Uh, if I don't get it, that's very unlucky. Um, I, I should be playing the odds that stock should show up now. I have two more uh, upgrades. It's a fun game. Dead Rising 2 is quite fun and a pretty fun speedrun. So it's fun stuff. Uh, right now, we're going to be hitting the next boss. Uh, this is Boykin. Uh, Boykin is a military general who is now shell-shocked, and he is one of the game's toughest bosses. Uh, funny enough, going back to the whole, uh, you know, uh, Souls gaming reference I mentioned earlier, uh, we're gonna have a Souls fight in a way, but not in the way you think. But before we get to that, we want to make sure that we're getting prepared. So we're gonna be taking the coffee creamers, uh, that's just actually perfect, because Quick Step's about to run out, so we actually have, a. Uh, Pretty good quick step. And uh, we're going to mix it and the orange juice. Uh, it's kind of funny as well, because having too much stock here isn't too much of a, like, having low stock isn't a massive detriment here, just because normally you would be only having three anyway. So it actually ends up working out. Uh, I'm gonna stand right up here. And look at orange cream skull, cream skull. Yeah, okay, that sounds right. Uh, we make our quick step, and now we entering the next fight. Uh, right before that, though, we need a weapon, so I'll be stealing this guy's shotgun. He always has it. There are two shotguns. First time I found this one. There's a saver one uh, that was actually uh, found by Maliku up above. Uh, I was like on the rafters of like the soundstage. Uh, personally, I don't like going for it just because quick step's a little bit awkward for me, and I, it's a skill issue. I can't, I can't walk on the rafter. Uh, I, I, I don't walk in the straightest of lines. It's kind of weird, but. We have the boss fight coming up. So, we're going to be fighting Boykin. And Boykin is going to be a tough fight. Normally, he's a late game fight, and they expect he'd be a much higher level, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we'll be using Quick Step and a single shotgun, and maybe a little bit more. But the strategy is going to open with us running immediately up to him. Uh, he has a range where I'm going to dance around. Also, uh, remember I mentioned the Souls fight? So, we're the boss, and Boykin's the main character. Uh, he's going to dodge roll out of harm's way a lot. <laughs> Uh, but I want to kind of keep him dancing in that range. Uh, the more he rolls, uh, the worse it is for me. Uh, I can't have him pull a, uh... Well, I think we had Captain Domo on earlier. Uh, he's quite good, but I, Boykin can't channel in his inner Domo. Uh, anyway, that was actually a really good fight, and Boykin is now dead. He tried, uh, tried dashing, didn't work. Uh, we had a really good fight there, by the way. Normally, you run out of shotgun shells. But that actually worked out really well. And hey, I finally got the stock I needed. Um, we can now carry Rebecca. 
and we nice. are going to be pretty good. This is actually really nice. Uh, we have we're set up nicely for the end game. But yeah, that's kind of the whole what Souls type fight I was talking about, except we're the boss. I just oh, it's always hilarious seeing that boy can just rolls. Also, same strategy. We have a car right here, so that's going to work quite well. That we can just double the movement speed once again. Uh, for anyone who is coming in now, or maybe you missed it earlier, uh, in these orange cars, carts, I, I don't know what they're called, like vehicles. Uh, if you hold forward twice or the gas button on the controller and the forward button on your keyboard, you will move it double the speed. It is as dumb as it sounds. But it does work. Why? I have no idea. It also only works with this car. Like, you can't do it on motorcycles. You can't do I think you can do it on like, one other car in a weird area. But, like, you can't really use it, so... Uh, anyway, my quick step is about to run out, so I'll actually refresh right here for safety, and we're gonna grab Rebecca. Yeah, it's been a pretty good run so far. It's playing Elden Ring. Elden Ring is in the same area of Souls. Like, it's all Souls. Like, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring. I always... It's the Souls gaming. It has a lot of the same stuff. Have a lot of the same, like, you know, the dodge roll, the parries. Oh, we don't really parry in this one. It's a pretty good game, though. You know, I don't know if it would work if you had more than one keyboard. That'd be hilarious if you had three keyboards. I don't know if anyone tried it. Like, I imagine it only works if the keyboard and controller are considered two different inputs, but in theory, you might be able to they have another one. I have no idea. I want to say it's been tried, but I don't have a way of saying good luck. Thank you. Alrighty, so you bring Rebecca back. And funny enough, the quick step routing was heavily brought into Dead Rising 2 because originally uh, we in Off the Record, we had quick step in the safe house mission and you'd want to keep it here. Also, I will save right here. There is a very hilarious glitch that can happen. It's sad and I don't want it to happen to me. If it happens to me, uh, it would be funny, but that would be very sad. Like I would hang my head down sad and it would be. Yeah, <laughs> I'll describe what it is, though. So we're now, uh, oh no, the safe house has been overrun with zombies. So what we need to do is close it. We need a generator, a spool of wire, and a gas barrel. So what can happen is all these doors are locked. However, this item can fall into the walls. So if that happens, you can't get it back and you soft lock the game. Uh, there's a few things that can happen. A zombie hits you, um, you get hit by allies. A bunch of bad things can happen to you. So, ideally, that's why you want to make a save right there. Now, obviously, if you're going for record or anything, you probably wouldn't make a save because you'd want to be going as fast as possible. But in this case, uh, yeah, I'd rather not have that happen. Uh, I learned that can happen because in the, in the past, a runner named uh, Sweetola uh, would run this game quite often, and it happened to him, and it was very sad because he was on a really good paced run, and then he lost it because the item fell through a door. Which, uh, yeah, that's not very good, is it? Would it actually be helpful? Yes, although it'd probably be hard to control. Anyway, at this point, the mission is now done, and hey, there we go. Oh, it's literally got a bunch of zombies inside here, and, like, we're going to ignore them, I guess? They're, they're allowed to live with us now. They're, 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 they're friendly. All right, we're actually making really good progress on this game right now. Uh, it's going nice. Uh, I think I, I think I did make the uh, the estimate quite generous, uh, mainly because some of the late game cases can get kind of mean. I should mention first off for Dead Rising speedrunning, we tend to run 72 hour mode or the base game normally. Uh, there is an overtime mode. We don't really do that. Like it's okay, but I think a lot of people just don't really like doing overtime all the time. So, in terms of how the run ends, it ends on the main final boss. Uh, TK is like uh, an, a secret extra boss, uh, but the final boss will be, um, you know, coming. Uh, it's a big plot twist. Who could it be? But uh, we'll be having a the main story. You won't be doing overtime. But there's a lot that can go wrong. Anyway, you saw that I picked up an assault rifle earlier. Uh, we need this for the next boss fight. It is one of the toughest bosses in the whole game. And funny enough, the recipe will now change. So I want to grab a couple of coffees and a coffee creamer. Uh, we want quick step once again. However, uh, we're not going to be going to the same blender. 
Uh, there are many blenders throughout Dead Rising 2, and really, you can use any of them. They, you just need the ingredients. So, coffees are going to be quite nice. Obviously, coffee's good for quick step. But what we can do here is one coffee creamer and coffee will make one, and then coffee and beer will make another one. I don't know why uh, coffee and beer will make quick step, which I guess there are coffee beers, but that doesn't sound appetizing. I don't know how many are, of you are into coffee and beer, but... Uh, there's a lot of vile drinks. Uh, funny enough, I actually, uh, on my YouTube, I made a video talking about the world of Dead Rising drinks, and I made some of the uh, concoctions in real life. Needless to say, they're all terrible. They're all the worst thing you can possibly imagine. Like, they are disgusting. They are vile. So, uh, keep that in mind. Hell, there's a drink called Painkiller, and it's whiskey and whiskey. Don't combine whiskey and whiskey. It is vile. It does not taste good. It tastes like you combine whiskey and whiskey, which, uh, about as good as you imagine it sounds. And there's also a bunch of other vile combinations. It's an acquired, oh, of course, of course, an acquired taste, we should say. Did I move faster? Well, whiskey and whiskey is a drink called Painkiller. I guess it's supposed to numb you or something. Uh, the, the quick step I think I used was wine and coffee creamer, which that tastes about as good as you expect it to taste. Anyway, uh, you're about to uh, hear one of the funniest stories in Dead Rising history. So I've been a part of the community for a long time. Uh, there has been quite a lot of discoveries in Dead Rising. And I have a running joke in the community where the community members uh, enjoy this. But I run a lot of games. Uh, I, you know, I run Speedruns of the Crypt. Uh, the reason why that works so well is because I speedrun about 190 games. That being said, sometimes I miss very obvious tech and very obvious things. Uh, one time, uh, a few years back, I had uh, a runner, Sweetola, do a run of Dead Rising 2 on the GD Hotfix here. And I learned that instead of going that way, there are stairs right here. And it saves a lot of time. Uh, the funny part, though, is, I don't know, sometimes I just don't think about some of the basic things. I think I had another time I had another Dead Rising runner on uh, for Mini Golf, Dead Rising Mini Golf, and I, they learned, I just full sent every shot, I didn't think about it. Uh, also, here's the hardest boss, it's the scientist, Mark and Pierce. Okay, Mark and Pierce are dead, we have done the hardest fight in the game. Oh my god, they're dead. But yes, I speed on every single Dead Rising game. Actually, I still want my gun back. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'll only come back, actually. I can use this. Alrighty, so with the scientists down, we are getting ready to enter the final boss. Yeah, the stairs is one of the saddest things. Um, I felt so bad learning there were stairs there. But I think I did a run immediately afterward and then got record for the time. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because I stairs, they were just there. And it's weird what we fixate on, I suppose. So we're entering the final boss right now. And I, I've been I'm harping on this the whole time. Obviously, with the final boss, we are very, very under leveled. And back in the old days, uh, we used to have a uh, strat where you would play it quite safe and you use sniper rifles to just avoid it. My favorite Dead Rising is one. Uh, at some point, though, we had a runner come in. Uh, I believe it was Slayer. And they found a fun strategy, which required us to get up close and personal with the final boss. The final boss's mechanic is weird, because Dead Rising wants you to have a fair fist fight, right? Um, you can use some melee weapons, but if you try fighting with, you know, guns uh, on the platform, what will happen is they will knock you off immediately. Now, what we're going to do is we need a balance on the platform with guns. So instead of using sniper rifles to play it safe, uh, we now get a very quick shotgun and we just yellow it. It is very tough. And thank you. Yeah, I do quite a lot. Um, I try usually being around the middle of the board for a lot of them. Like, I just like knowing a lot. Some of them are really good at, some of them have record, um, you know, lost record. But I just like speedrunning. I think it's quite fun. I like doing a lot of horror games. Uh, I do pretty much most of the Dead Rising games, I do every Clock Tower game, I do all the Silent Hills, uh, I do most of the Resident Evil games. If you name a horror franchise, I have very likely done it to some degree. There are some I have not done, but, you know, I keep uh, 
bringing it up. Fair fist fight? It would be a fair fist fight, but what happens is if you bring a gun, he will try to knock you off the platform. That's actually the, the fair part of the fist fight. So normally it would be fair. Also, the villain is Sullivan! Oh my god, I can't believe it! Sullivan, the whole time. How could he? How could he do this? Anyway, oh wait, uh, not that one. This is... I don't need to make a save right here. In fact, I'll be making another save, but... This isn't the best port. I highly implore you, if you play Dead Rising 2 on PC, do not alt-tab, like, at all. Alan Wake, yep, Outlast, yep. I have a big profile. Some really weird, some expected. Uh, but anyway, with Dead Rising 2, the game can crash. It happens. Uh, it mostly runs well, as long as you don't alt-tab. Uh, a lot of people will, like, constantly alt-tab and then, oh, why isn't my game working? And it's because you broke it, that's why. Uh, anyway, I will take uh, one of these, uh, just in case. I don't think I needed that, but it's okay. Uh, we are hitting the final boss. So, like I said, we're going to be grabbing, uh, we'll probably grab LMG, we'll grab shotgun, and then we'll have quick steps. Uh, the final boss is very, very tough. Also, yes, I do a Wheel of Games. Uh, I'll actually be doing one this weekend, like on Saturday, which I take all the games I run, I put them on a giant, like, Twitch wheel, I spin the thing, and then I will randomly do them based off that. And there's a lot. Dead Space? Dead Space is actually one I don't do, funny enough. Like, that's, like, one of the major ones I don't. Or I've never done anything in that franchise. But that's because Dead Space scares me. Uh, I've had Sharkat on a few times. Sharkat 87 will be commenting for a later run. And uh, those runs are tough. I highly applaud Sharkat uh, because they are out of bounds fiestas and they are immensely difficult. Like, I can do some out of bounds, but Dead Space is a whole other beast. It is a mean game. Uh, it has a pretty steep learning curve. So we are going to be fighting TK. Uh, the run actually will end on Sullivan. Uh, there, Penalty, I guess one can make a category if I TK. You just need one more Zombrex, which you probably grab from the underground, or you maybe you can just fight a boss. But it doesn't add too much more. You just kind of get supplies, and then you like go to TK, and you just hit him repeatedly. Uh, you'd also make Painkiller. Anyway, we're going to play it a little bit safe here. Uh, we're going to make more quick step. We want to make sure this lasts the whole time. If I don't quick step, I die. So we'll make, uh, how about two of these? Nice. We're going to drink one right about now. Evil Finn, I've done one. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that guy right there. He has a shotgun. This is actually why I kept the assault rifle. Now I don't need it. Uh, all I wanted was that one shot for the shotgun. Uh, after that, we are then going to grab the LMG. This is safe. You don't need this, but, you know, if you run out of gun, you kind of just die. So don't run out of gun. Nice. Okay. And this will be the final save we make in the game. We're actually doing really good, and we are coming up on the end of the run. Um, so we will be grabbing a save. Also, I know there is an inbounds category, but, like, the out-of-bounds stuff is pretty cool for Dead Space. Strategy will be shotgunning Sullivan the whole time. Uh, you'll kind of see the strategy when we get up there. It's going to be usually one or two shots of the shotgun, and then we want to dodge left the whole time. It is a very awkward dodge. It takes a while to learn. Uh, if I get hit, uh, keep in mind, this is not easy. Uh, if you also try it at home, if you want to learn this category, it is very difficult. Don't feel bad if you get hit a lot. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of help in the arena, and that's actually why I made more quick steps. So, also, there's a fix on the speedrun page for Dead Rising 2. That's how the controller works. Alright, there we go. Oh, there's the punch. <laughs> okay, he did it immediately. But you know what? I can take his, uh... Wait, that's a flare. Oh, god. You know what? Give me that fish. Oh, my god. Uh... The perfect storm of bad is happening right now. Uh, Alright, I got my fish. We're good. Alright, back up we go. Uh, maybe we're fun? Oh my god, dude, he's holding in! Okay, hold on, hold on. This is going a little bit bad. Give me the fish. Okay. Luckily, I have plenty of fish. Uh, Sullivan really came out to play today. Uh, normally, he's a lot nicer. Oh, 
There we go. Nice. There we go. That's the strategy. That's what we're looking for right there. You know, there's like that weird little lean. Up oh, one more. Uh, time is coming up in a moment here when Sullivan dies. Uh, oh, looks like ran out. Uh, that actually works. This has been very sloppy of a final boss. Does like if he goes bad, it goes bad. Uh, but he should be down in a second. And uh, that's time. He's dead. And we went way underestimated. That worked out. Uh, we didn't run into many issues. We had safety saves. But that was Dead Rising 2. We can watch the ending a little bit here. Funny that this is the canon ending, which is why this is the main category. Um, Sullivan will be... Uh, let's see what happens to Sullivan. And his giant punches. But it worked pretty well there, I suppose. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to Sullivan. Although, you know, I guess Sullivan after the events of this is half the man that he used to be. <laughs> yeah, I like Off the Record as well. I speed run both. They're pretty fun. And yeah, that was Dead Rising 2. It's a pretty fun, quick uh, little category. Um, pretty, pretty fun, although the ending went a little bit bad there. I do hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it was uh, fun being able to show this off. I have plenty more fun runs to come to you. Uh, I'll be on the hosting side in a moment for that. Uh, but as a runner, I do want to say I hope you enjoyed Dead Rising 2. Uh, I am McDysis. I do over uh, about 190 different horror games and other games as well. I feel like speedrunning or challenge runs or horror in general. I do all that. So I've been doing a lot of Dead Rising lately too in, uh, in excitement for the remake. Uh, hopefully you did enjoy that. Uh, you can find my link probably somewhere in Twitch chat or on the screen, somewhere around here. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully you did enjoy that. And also just shout out to the Dead Rising community. I have a lot of plans with them coming up soon, and hopefully they'll go well. Um, that being said, on the host side, I do just want to say really quick that uh, we do have an official GEQ Discord and a Hotfix rule. It keeps you up to date on all the latest Hotfix shows. Uh, we had earlier Challenger approaching, uh, the Speeders in the Crypt, so there's a lot of updates you can find for that. Uh, as well, if you miss any of the shows and events, you can find any of the VODs on youtube.com slash games done quick. Anyway, surely, surely nothing bad will happen to Chuck, right? If you're wondering, this leads into a DLC called Case West. Um, so I, I don't know if we want to watch the ending or not. We can. Uh, I guess we can, you know, I guess we start a little bit later. We probably get back on track. Uh, I can just tell you what happens. Uh, TK is a zombie and then he grabs Chuck and then they run away from him and then Frank West saves him. And there you go. Anyway, we'll be right back with more games. Up next is the Granthology. So we'll be right back. Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Hopefully you enjoyed the run of Dead Rising 2. I do like being able to showcase some runs for you. However, one of the more fun parts as well is sharing different uh, branches of the speedrunning horror community and being able to show you some cool runs that you may or may not know. Uh, anyway, this was a fan favorite coming up from the last uh, AGDQ, so not the last event, but the one prior to that. Uh, it was pretty fun, a bundle of laughs, and we should have a fun time once again. Uh, you may know this runner in the various horror circles, and you might even know this game. Uh, it is definitely a weirder game, but it is charming nonetheless. Uh, anyway, we'll be having Granny 1, 2, and 3. It is the Nanthology. I thought it was the Granthology, but it is the Nanthology, because there's a lot of Nans. Anyway, we'll be having that with the Maxi Lobes. Take it away. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Reppin' the Nanthology. Shoutouts to Metal Waldo for getting me this shirt. After the uh, AGDQ run. Granny Theft Auto. Granny Theft Auto. Love it. Um, so yeah, this is Granny 1, 2, and 3, the three official Granny games. Um, I'm going to be doing all of the uh, Granny Theft Auto fun shenanigans. We're going to be stealing a car and stealing a helicopter and a train. It's going to be good times. Um, yeah, this is a very popular game. Uh, very popular game. I picked it up just for fun, and then it kind of grew into something more. So... Uh, yeah, we're gonna get started in three, two, one, I go. I'm 
there are unofficial granny games, yes. There are a lot of fan-made games. Like I said, this game is very popular. Uh, it came out in 2017, like, I want to say, like, six months after RE7. Um, and the mobile version just blew up. Because this is originally a mobile game, and then it got ported to uh, PC. So right now I'm kind of just moving around, seeing where Granny may have spawned. I think she spawned upstairs. So we're going to go check a bunch of stuff downstairs. First. We have two parts of the shotgun, which is a great start. Getting a, getting a weapon early is good. So feel free to ignore me, by the way, if it gets stressful at all to run. But uh, especially with a game like this with Granny, to my understanding, I think a lot of the elements you're trying to find are randomized. Uh, what exactly are we trying to look out for? And like, I guess, how do we, uh, do you have like a routing in mind for this? So Granny is very random. Yes, this game is all about randomization. Every single item is randomized, but there are seeds. There are a lot of seeds. I don't really, I don't really want to memorize all of the seeds uh, and try to go for like the most optimal uh because, you know, you're doing 1, 2, and 3. You're not really resetting for anything like that. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of items that I'm going to be looking for. There's no particular routing based on, like, oh, what item should appear here. It's more so, like, where is Granny? And she has four different spawn points. I believe four. It might be more, actually. Um, so the way that I start out... Uh, if she spawns upstairs, I just search the downstairs a lot. Um, if she spawns downstairs, I just search the upstairs a lot. Um, but there is kind of like a way of guiding her and making noise, because when you, when you drop items, it makes noise, and she'll be attracted to that noise and go check it out. Um, there are definitely good ways of, uh, getting her to go to one side of the house while you go search the other. Um... And obviously there are like these little tripwire bell things and there's like creaky floors. And all of these things are trying to play against you, but you can also use them to your advantage. Uh, but right now we are looking for parts for the car. We're gonna repair a car and drive it out of here. Oh, there's the book. We need this. She's probably on her way. Where are you? Yep. Oh, she got me. <laughs> That's Granny. So that book I need for uh, putting on like a, I don't know what you call it. It's like, it's just a stand for the book. You put it, you put it on there and then there's a, a trapped other elderly woman who drops a key for you. I don't know the lore behind her. There isn't much lore really, but there's lore. So let's see, let's go get this book back. Also, this might possibly a d be a dumb question. Why does Granny? Like, why, why does she, Granny? Yeah, why does she do what she does? Like, there, it, like that is a great question. She's like you in the um, house, or like she? Well, okay. So the way that Granny starts out is you're you're in the woods, right? Yeah. You're just in the woods, just hanging out, doing things that you would do in the woods, I guess. I don't know. Woods, um, woods and things. she Yeah, she finds you and she's like, Ah, I'm going to knock you out and kidnap you, and then I guess Granny lives in the woods. So now you're in the woods in Granny's house, and I don't think she has any purpose behind what she does other than I don't like people in my woods, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's that's a fair reason. Yeah. So that a crossbow? This is a crossbow. It's got a tranquil tranquilizer dart. That was close. Now she's going to be knocked out for a minute. Yes, only a minute. Granny's constructed alternatively. You can shoot her with a shotgun and she's only out for a minute and a half. It's impressive. You know, in all honesty, I mean, if she had the crossbow and the tranquilizer in her house, how is she not getting doped up on tranquilizers in the woods? Maybe that's why she wants You know what? There. That that could be that could be a like, thing. Maybe she's that only lasts a minute. Have anyone I'm, find the stash? I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, uh, 
it doesn't work, but I feel like if a tranquilizer only lasts a minute, I feel like I'd be out longer, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've never been hit with a tranquilizer dart, and I hope I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone wants to get hit with a trank. Hopefully no one in Twitch chat has experience with that. All right, two pieces of the shotgun. Oh, good. We have something to cut wires with. Uh, do I need that right now? Not really. But we're going to take it upstairs. So we'll need it later. I heard a door open. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go this way. We're gonna go through this tunnel and go to the shed. There's the gas. We definitely need that. Okay, she's still right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make some noise out here and lead her outside. She should be coming over here to the shed now. Good, good, good. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, we don't have a whole lot, but we have stuff. We do have things. I think the best idea now would be to go upstairs. to drop these off and get this key that that trapped elderly woman I, I think the I think granny like trapped her daughter in there I think that's the lore and then Slendrina is the granddaughter I think that's the lore we're also going to be seeing Grandpa. But that's in Chapter 2 and 3. Okay, nothing down here. So, there was an update for Granny uh, last, last year, so if this area doesn't look familiar, it's because it got an update. Uh, so, yeah, you may have played this and you're experienced the Granny, but there is a reason to replay it. Yeah, that thing. It's like a large granny head on six legs. Granny spider thing. Why does granny just have a granny spider in her basement? Yeah, that I that part of the lore I do not know. Maybe she just does that. Maybe it's her free time. She also has a pet regular spider in the attic. Well, it's large, but imported straight from Australia. Oh. Okay, where is she? Oh, there she is, okay. Nothing on this shelf. Uh, I think the number was two. So come up here, there's like a and there's like a coin flip unless you actually find the answer. We saw it earlier, it was two. But if you come here without finding the answer, then it's like a, it's a coin flip. If you touch this, you explode. Wait, what? It's got a bomb in it. Yes, it has a bomb in it. Oh. Why, why would she yeah. do that? <laughs> I did, dude, Granny is... Uh... Granny doesn't hold back. No, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like if you, you know, why bother having the key? That just, you know, not have it. Yeah, I. That's Maybe also funny. another good question. Maybe that's it's funnier that way. All right, so this is the special key. Uh, it's special because it brings us to the the attic where the other pet spider is, the not so scary one. Uh oh, that's a trap. 
That's a great spot for a trap, Granny. That's impressive. Okay, I'll take my time. I'll wait. Did she just, like, lay that down manually, or, like, does that just, like, spawn in? So, she, um, when she gets in a chase, sometimes she will set down a trap after the chase is over. I don't know exactly what dictates, like, oh, I'm gonna put a trap down. It's just, uh, seems random. Like almost everything else in this game. Well, I don't want to give the commentators curse, but uh, I had terrible luck earlier in Dead Rising 2, and uh, I'm hoping it won't be the theme of the night. I hope not. But we shall see. Can she walk okay, in she's her coming own up here. trap? She cannot, but there is a trap that I unlocked earlier that I can go get. I'm not going to yet, because I don't need it, but if I do need it, I'll go get it. It's like a, it's like an ice trap. You put it on the floor, and it completely freezes her. Did you say ice? Yes. What? Why does she, she comes have frozen? that? I, that's, that's another great question. That I don't have the answer it's to. An old woman living in the woods, uh, with the power to turn people into ice, uh, the power for her to turn into a giant <laughs> spider, uh, well, I think it's like several vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, now this is making me think of, uh, The Incredibles, how Buddy got all that money. Maybe became Granny a not superhero a superhero. Of super weapons she's selling off. Uh huh, yeah. Okay, now I'm I'm trying to figure out exactly what I should do. Um, I should probably get the meat and feed the spider upstairs. I'm gonna throw the meat down on the floor. Try to attract her this way so I can go... Actually, scratch that. We should use the hammer. Because there's a bunch of boards upstairs. Gotta get rid of them. Car key, good. These are all these are all things we need. Oh, okay. It's not exactly there we go. Good toss. So we have the battery, we have the gas, the car key, we have, we have a lot of good stuff. Oh, here's the wrench. Beautiful. Okay, now it's all coming together. Now it's all coming together. Got the wrench. Uh, I think we put the engine part on already. I think all we need is the spark plug. I think that is the last thing we need, and usually the spark plug is the hardest thing to find, because it's, it's it's usually trapped behind keys, and the only way to get keys is uh, kind of, it's a long process, but it doesn't have to be a long process. The, key, the I mean, the key could be right here. <gasps> Ooh, let's go! The key was right there. Okay, so this is the padlock key, because you need to Unlock the garage door before you can ram through it. Let's put the battery in. Uh, it's the safe key. Don't need that quite yet. Um... Spark plug, spark plug. There's the wrench. Where could the spark plug be? <laughs> it's intense music. <laughs> Well, I do have... Okay, let's let's get the shotgun. Let's shoot Granny. So 
so she can stop chasing us. Locked and loaded. Granny, I have a present. <laughs> How long does the uh, shotgun uh, take her down for? A minute and a half. <laughs> so a little bit better than a tranquilizer. I was right in Just the head. Just a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said earlier in chat, apparently Granny's microdosing on smaller bullets to build up to the larger bullet, apparently. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. You know what? I believe it. And uh, it would track, right? Good strat. Mm-hmm. That tracks for sure. Granny's been uh, waiting for this day that someone would... Sorry. She would kidnap someone, they would break out of their cage, and then uh, steal her gun. She's been waiting for this exact moment. It's all... It's all coming up, Granny. Yeah, she she knew. She was prepared. Imagine if she didn't do that. <laughs> a lot longer than a minute yeah. and a half. So it's like a little bit better than a tranquilizer. Just a tiny bit. All right, so we did get really good luck here. We got the spark plug in the in the, uh, the playhouse. Yeah. Yeah, she has a guillotine, specifically for watermelon. I mean, it's effective, I guess. <laughs> she just cuts it in Effective, half. but not exactly convenient. No, you have to go to the backyard. You know what else works? A knife! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this was a decent granny one. Pretty decent. Just gonna bash through the garage door here, steal the car. That's ours now. Very nice. Dumb question. Can you hit Granny with the car? You can. <laughs> you can indeed. She She's <laughs> out for a minute and a half. It's always a minute and a half. <laughs> she just gets up. Wait, what do you mean leaving at that point? Well, how do you know it's a minute and a half? Are, are you people to hit her and then just stay? I mean, there's just text that shows up on the screen that says the granny is gone for a minute and a half. All right, let's see here. Granny won. Uh, oh. Okay, I need to switch games, but it's not showing up on OBS. So give me a moment. If you want to switch screens really quick, Richard. All a part of that speed tech. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll only be down for about like a minute and a half. <laughs> it's just, same game crashes, minute and a half. Get hit by a car, minute and a half. Get shot, oh, just a minute and a half. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, good to go. We have game feed now. Granny chapter two. All right. This is when grandpa comes into play. And uh, grandpa is very dangerous. I find that grandpa's more dangerous than granny a lot of the time in granny two. He's just more aggressive, I guess. So did he just, like, move in? Did they find him in the woods? Or, like, was he always just, like, chilling? I... They might have met up and got married very quickly after Granny won, somehow. You know? You know. I get it. You find the only other old person in the woods, like, it's fate. Right. Yeah. Um, he is also very rich. Apparently. But yet they live in a cabin in the um, woods. Right, yeah. And how hor what is that painting? He's asleep. Oh. Well, he was asleep for all of about 0.5 seconds. And then he got but up. How does the waking and up annihilated and sleeping me. thing work with grandpa? Uh, Grandpa goes and takes a nap and is usually napping for like a little bit, usually longer than half a second. Um, 
but uh, you can steal the security key off of him. That's the whole point of, like, taking out Grandpa or catching him napping, is to steal the security key off of him. It's right around his neck right there. Also, this is a safe place. But we gotta get out of line of sight so he goes away. Okay, Grandpa. There you go. He's leaving. So if you shoot Grandpa, how long is he down? Take a wild guess. A minute and a half. Yeah! <laughs> oh gosh, okay. This is unfortunate. Oh, okay, they both went around. They didn't do the pincer. They did not do the pincer attack. This is good. Someone pointed it out. What is with Grandpa's shoes? Why are they so red? It's making a fashion oh. statement. Oh, gosh. Okay, so that's the taser. It's good we found the taser early. Uh, I could not take them both down in one shot, so I'm just going to have to take the, uh, the bonk there and get back upstairs and find that taser. It should just be on the floor. You know, it's awfully polite of them to just leave the taser on the ground. Yeah, they don't move it. Big mistake. Big mistake. I suppose they also don't lock the door either. Kind of just hit you and throw you in a room, and then maybe they, maybe they like the chase. Maybe they like the uh, the back and forth they got going on. Also, did you grab back the taser? Yeah, yeah, that is a thing. Not a one-time use. Do tasers work like that normally? I've never, never been tased. I don't. I don't believe they do. No. So Grandpa should be coming upstairs to be like, oh no, Granny, no, but he's not. I don't know where he is. He just seemingly doesn't care. I'm going to play the song. Also, not to be that guy, because, you know, it's, it's always fun. But uh, why why do we? Why can the character not just steal the bat? Is it like glued to her hand? Maybe. What if it was? Maybe that's why he can't steal it if he tried. That's some powerful glue. Maybe that's why they're so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares to help Granny. She has that bat stuck in her hand. Alright, so we have the weapon key, which uh, gives us the ability to pick up the shotgun. Which we will need. Um, but for now... Huh? Oh, gosh, Granny, you're already back. For now, we're gonna go drain the water, because, fun fact, uh, in Granny 2, there's, like, an evil four-legged demon child that they have in their backyard that they feed, um, but they also have a, a weird swamp monster thing. Naturally. And it lives in just any source of water, essentially. Well, there's only two. There's that source of water that we just drained, and then there's one down by the boat. Uh, and it will eat you. If you get eaten, do you just end up back in the room? Do they, like, get your body, like, the bones, and, like, regrow yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. How polite. She's just chilling, I guess. Tape. Yeah, she's just vibing. Now, I think the best idea would be pick up the taser again and just uh, wait it out. This is like the this is kind of the the reason why Granny Two is so hard is because if you um if you don't find the taser like relatively early, you're kind of stuck in this loop of trying to 
get upstairs and then go back downstairs and you get pincered a lot because, you know, there's two of them now. There she is. Hello. Okay, let's bring some stuff up here. So this is the upstairs area. You have to take a ladder to get there. There's another way of getting there. Uh, but that also makes it a safe place because they cannot go up ladders. What's all that noise? Oh. Okay. Right. Bring the duct tape up. Put that there. So we need three pieces of this uh, painting of Grandpa in order to access an area. There's the glass fuse. That's an item we need. So we have the duct tape, the glass fuse. We have the shotgun available because we got the key. Uh, we just need the manual because, yes, you just need to read a few pages from a manual and then you know how to fly a helicopter. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that tracks. I'm not here. No, 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 uh -oh. no. Uh, she like, yes, it worked. <laughs> I don't know how that Does worked, but it worked. Is showering? Is she like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> yeah, she's not fond of water. She has like okay. a swamp monster. Yeah, the irony. She's also not fond of shotguns. Or tasers, or... Tr Actually, I think she's very fond of tranquilizers, but... The tranquilizer, yeah, that theory checks out. Where's Grandpa? There you are. Bam. Alright. Good. Good, good, good. Can you get the shotgun bullet back, or is it just like a taser kind of deal? Nah, there's no shotgun uh, bullet return, but there is shotgun bullets laying around that you can pick up. We will definitely be doing that. So I still need a few things. I think I'm just missing one piece of the portrait. It might be in here. Oh, it is in here. Cool. Uh, but we're still missing the fuel. I like how they casually carry helicopter fuel in their house. Well, you can also use the fuel on the boat. Because there's a boat in this one, too. Um, but, you know, we, we want to we wanna steal the more expensive vehicle. So, in terms of, like, speedrun-wise, is there, like, a benefit to taking either boat or helicopter? Or, like, is it helicopters better? Um... I mean, the door would probably be the fastest way of doing it, but it's you not know, as that fun. Is fair. It's not as fun. You need to, I think you need to, like, cut off the electricity, uh, get the door handle, get the key, all that, all that stuff. Um, the boat, you need the spark plug, um, steering wheel, fuel, and I think one other item. I think you need, like, a key. Uh, with the helicopter, you need the most items, but it's also, like, the best. Where are you? Come here, Granny. I'm making lots of noise for you. There you are. Good shot. Good shot. Okay. Now then. Um... I do want to check over here really quick, so we're going to have to tase the little demon child. Wait, is it child? That thing. Yeah. Oh. I, and then Slendrina gets all upset. It's like the ghost of Slendrina. She's like, ah, you killed my <laughs> grandma's demon child. How dare you? She's like the moon. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. See, this is why you don't trust families who just randomly uh, kidnap people in the woods, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh. that's fair. Or, like, yeah, they have a lot going on, don't they? Yeah, you know, the tranquilizer theory. 
the Slendrina incident. You know, considering how angry the moon is in this universe, maybe the tranquilizers aren't a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe there's a reason why this is happening. I think Link could have learned something from Granny. A little Where's bit. that other piece of the portrait? I, I swear I had it, and then I just... Ditched it. Oh, there's the manual. See, now we know how to pilot a helicopter. Easy. Oh, there's the shotgun. We definitely need this. Oh, uh... All oh, the range. How did he do it? <laughs> yeah, he's got Commando Pro. Oh my goodness! It's like the uh, the okay. Akuma, the just the command grad. Yeah, good lord. That's okay. We basically have everything. Although I'm not gonna lie, Grandpa's definitely padding his stats right now. I think that's number three for him. He's getting ready to make his Evo career. Oh, there's the other piece of the portrait. It is down there. Okay. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Let's get a little revenge. You know, during Granny 3, you're going to ask, why are they doing this to you? And you're going to remember why. <laughs> How long do you think that, uh, that, like, manual is? Do you think it just says drive? It could. It could just say, press book. There's no way. Grandpa. And the I told he's, you. On a, he's on a tear right now. And Ferris, you did go back for him. I, yeah, I did. <laughs> you did. That little bit of time that I spent, this could have been avoided. Okay. I have everything, I just need to survive. Just seemingly harder than I thought it would be. Okay. Are we good? Yes, we're good. Okay. All right. So we got the uh, shotgun to do the little puzzle here, which opens this door, and then you need the, you need the glass fuse because there's a trap door here. I gotta ask, do they... Uh, and then... Whoa, whoa, what's up? Do they hear those shotgun shells? Yeah, Granny does. Grandpa can't hear. Oh. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you see this? It's broken. Just patch it up with some duct tape. What a, what a stable vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> it just went, like, right up to... Yeah. Oh, is that a Gatling gun on there? Yeah, it's got a couple of missiles, too. Or they live in the woods! What do they need to shoot at? Bears. Yeah, bears and apparently the moon. <laughs> Alright, there it is. Granny 2, we got the helicopter. After getting wrecked quite a bit by Grandpa. But, you know, that's how it goes. Fun fact, uh, if you don't read the manual, I'll one or two pages of the manual or don't fix the duct tape you just like you crash and die so make sure you read the manual all right game switch richard do your magic All right, any three, good to go.
So, Granny 3. Granny 3 is very interesting. What's the, uh, the because, the uh, so Granny and Grandpa, right? Grandpa now has a shotgun. Grandpa is, uh, he's, he's upset. Um, and also, Slendrina is a thing. So that that ghost, that moon ghost that you saw just earlier, that is Slendrina, and she is going to appear, and it's kind of like a, a jump scare mechanic, but also it like makes it so that your camera stays on her, and if you don't look away, she kills you. So that is the added mechanic of Granny 3. And Granny 3 is also very, very difficult because there's only one way to get upstairs. Uh, whereas in Granny 2, there was like that little shortcut that I opened. Ooh, the teddy bear's in here. Uh, that's important to know. All right, so I have a really important question that I, I have never asked, and I think maybe Chad might be wondering. Uh, are we playing with the same guy in all three games? I actually don't know. That would be I'm, very, very unlucky. I was wondering if this case. guy just keeps getting caught. Like, oh, hey, I got away, oh. and then they just find him and like maybe crash the car, and crash the helicopter. <laughs> oh, hey. hey, again, welcome back. Maybe he keeps coming back to the woods. He's like, oh man, I want to see Granny and Grandpa again. I mean, probably they have like three mansions in the woods. Like, this is a mansion. Yeah, this one's big. Like I said, they are they are pretty well off. Also, they they brought the guillotine. What? They brought it with they them. They moved in and excited of all the things to pack. The guillotine. And this time, this time it's not watermelon that they cut; it's coconuts. That is barbaric. Wouldn't they break the guillotine as a? Can you cut a coconut? How do you open a coconut? Yeah, I don't know exactly how. Oh, well, good night, Grandpa. Uh, I don't know how strong guillotines are. I don't know why. I've never but... used a guillotine. And I've never opened a coconut. Yes, and... so I'm... Wait, did you shoot him while he was down? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he was napping. But, well, well, he, he still is napping, napping kind of. <laughs> he's having a bad dream. That's why he's shaking so much. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> God, he is... Yeah, he is, he is going all right. All right, so we have the shotgun. This is great. This is a great start. We got the shotgun. We got the uh, slingshot. We're going to go up, and we're going to go check if we're killing the bird or not. I don't like killing the bird, but sometimes it's necessary. And right now, it's necessary, because that is the electric switch. We need that. Apologies to all my bird enjoyers. What a way of killing the bird, by the way. Point blank shotgun. <laughs> yeah, there's another way of getting the bird to leave, but um, it just it's slower. You gotta like get the firewood and put it in the fireplace, and you gotta go get the matches and then light it on fire. It's it's a process. So I'm taking a wild guess, and if you like shoot next to the bird, he just doesn't move. Nah, nah, he stands his ground. He's awfully brave. That is a shotgun going off by his head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if birds understand the whole idea of like bullets and stuff like that. But also, I have an update. Apparently, uh, you can open coconuts with machetes. Uh, ac uh, according to Twitch chat here, you have to remove the husk, so it likely breaks ah. a guillotine. Right. Oh, so wait, they have a coconut. Where are they living? Isn't coconuts like a tropical fruit? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They must have a very stocked grocery store nearby here in the woods. Maybe they're okay, hoping that was to make convenient. this new resort. <laughs> a kidnapping resort? Yeah, yeah I mean, With they the... have the mansion, they're gonna get the beachfront property, I don't know, they're gonna find a way to do it, apparently. Underground tranquilizer business? Alright, we need the slingshot, we got two rocks. Should be enough. I don't think I'll need more than two for the time being. Uh, we're going to go break a window and go snatch a couple of items. We still need uh, a coin. We still need the train key and we still need the accelerator. These are all things we still need. Okay. 
Okay, no item in there. Well, nothing that we need. Essentially, there's the matches. Let's go all the way upstairs. Should probably move that shotgun. Grandpa can pick the shotgun back up. So you gotta be careful where you leave it. That is definitely not a good spot to leave it, but I am on a mission right now. I gotta open this box. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Accelerator. So what's the vehicle we're getting this time? It's a train. A, a they train. have an they have an underground train system. I don't know where they accumulate all this money, but yeah, it's uh. <laughs> Honestly, that impressive. makes a lot of sense. Maybe why we're going into the woods each time. Because <laughs> that's where the train stops are. Oh, I was gonna say that's where the money is. Apparently, you just go into the woods oh. and you can afford your mansion, your uh, your train, your helicopter. You got a point there. Give me this. Okay. Uh, last thing we need is the train key. Could be. Could be behind Slendrina. That is a possibility. But it also could be behind uh, a very long puzzle that involves like shooting uh, pots. And like bringing them downstairs filled with water, and it, yeah, it's, it's the longest one for sure. Longest little task to do. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reload the shotgun. Last pair of bullets here, and we're gonna go pick up some rocks as well. So we're fully loaded. What do the rocks do? So if you headshot, well, if you headshot Grandpa or Granny with the slingshot, it does count as a full down. If you don't hit them in the head, it just counts as dizzying them. And I'm um, guessing they go down for a minute and a half. A minute and a half for the shotgun. I think the slingshot headshot is only a minute. You know, I'm very glad because I was about to say, if a slingshot does the same damage as a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. It's a powerful slingshot. I don't know if we'll have enough time to actually do this. We're gonna find out. Oh, Grandpa's going upstairs. Hold on. This is good. He didn't pick up a shotgun. He's throwing. Oh, the plank's in here. Huh. Huh. Oh, he just... How did he eat that? Okay. It's been, like, right through him. Yeah. Very powerful man. What a guy. Oh, there's the coconut. Yeah, it's... It's chilling. It's just something inside this coconut. Okay, I gotta ask. Is the coconut, like, randomly what's inside, or is like, it always the same thing? It's not always the same thing. Oh my god. Yeah. So you're telling me that they just jam random objects? How do you jam an item yes. in a coconut? How do you re reseal up a coconut? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> Alright, there's the padlock key. This is good. It's a good item to get. Okay, we're gonna lure her to the kitchen and then go outside. It would be convenient if there was any rocks out here for me to pick up, but I don't see any. That's all right. Uh,
I think I dropped the slingshot over here, right? Good. Okay. Yeah, alright. That's like the worst thing to do in this game, is like leave weapons upstairs, because like I said earlier, there's only one way of going up. And only... well, there's a couple ways to go down, but only one way of going up, so you gotta be really careful. Is this loaded? No, okay. Give her the old razzle-dazzle here. make a bunch of noise so she goes that way which I hope is the case is she already over there? yeah okay where are my last bullets? I know I have some oh right dining room upstairs dining room ooh grandpa? Paul's going to the bathroom. Good. I was very lucky. He could have turned around and that would have been a bit of a shame. Okay, he didn't eat the bullets that time. Granny? There you are. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um... Now that they're down for a minute and a, and a half, uh, I should probably go check to see if the train key is behind Slendrina. Just in case the vase puzzle does not give us it. Just, you know. Being safe about it. So this is the only way to actually stop Slendrina from, like, haunting you, is to give her back her teddy bear. And then she's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for giving me back my teddy bear. And then she gives you a key. Oh, polite. This is not this is not the key we're looking for, but that's okay, Slendrina. That's all right. So she's fine with uh, killing I, her son if you give her back the teddy bear? Yeah. That's fair. I don't think it's her son. I think it's like, uh, just like a, you know, just a childhood friend. Either way, it was murder. It was murder. That's the important it was. part. Okay, shed key. The train key could be here. Okay, yeah. All right. I had a feeling it wasn't behind the base puzzle in the end. Just based on, like, where all the other items were spawning. So this should be the last thing. I have the accelerator. We got the electric switch. Train key, we got the ticket already. Yeah, we, we're good to go. Now we're just gonna be juggling some items. Now, I did hear Granny chuckle, so she is back up. I'm glad she could laugh off a shotgun shell. Okay, yeah, she's here. Uh, she may be laughing, but she's very upset. Well, yeah, she got hit with a shotgun shell. Oh! Probably best that we actually take that, because there's no way I can get those three items in there without getting hit by Granny. It's gonna be like DBD, where I'm just gonna be looping her and making no progress. So, gonna end up back in the cell, and we have a free, a free out now. Granny's not gonna be chasing us. 
She got one. Actually, no, she got two. She got me and Granny one earlier, didn't she? Yeah. So four, four for Grandpa, two for Granny. Not too bad. Pretty even match here. And that's going to be it for Granny three. Time is coming up. In three, two, one. Time. <laughs> GG's. That's the Nanthology, the Granny Theft Auto category. <laughs> Uh, super fun, super fun games. Uh, I would not, I would not have ever believed that I would, would have ran this with GDQ, because it was kind of one of those things where I picked it up just for fun, and everybody was like, this is extremely entertaining, and I love it, you should submit it. And I was like, okay, I guess I will. Submitted it once, instant, instant pick from, from the games committee, I guess, uh, Rightfully so, it was actually a blast. So if you haven't seen the AGDQ run from earlier this year, I do suggest watching it. Uh, it's it's uh, quite remarkable, um, everything that happened in that run. Uh, but this was a nice little taste of the of the anthology as well. So thank you, Ek, for uh, for inviting me. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I just want to say, uh, SGDQ was a blast. So um, thanks to uh, thanks to all the staff and uh, all the volunteers. Great event, super fun. I had a blast, so. And uh, shout outs to all the friends who made it a good time as well. I had, I had a very good week. Um, and yeah, if you haven't caught any of like the cool runs uh, on the YouTubes uh, for SGDQ, uh, two of them that I commentated for were Silent Hill 1 and Dirge of Cerberus. Highly suggest watching those, um, especially Dirge. Dirge is very impressive run. Um, and, uh, yeah, super, super cool. And Silent Hill was a blast. Uh, so shout outs to Death Tropes, shout outs to Dan. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, really? That's, that's it for me. Really quick, I just want to say one thank you again for doing that run. Uh, two, if anyone wanted to find you specifically, where can I watch it? Uh, twitch.tv slash maxilobes. I'm on there five to six days a week. Uh, I run a ton of games, uh, varying genres as well. You can catch a lot of different things there. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of challenge runs lately too, so that's always fun. Uh, I also have a YouTube. I've done like a Silent Hill 3 world record history, uh, a deep dive on the beginnings of RE7 speedrunning, uh, a couple, couple of cool documentary style stuff. I have a video coming out very soon uh, about a glitch hunter named Hippo. Um, that one should be really, really cool. He's actually found quite a few things, including stuff uh, in games that Ek himself has ran. Um, so yeah, he's he's a prolific glitch hunter, so... Alrighty. Keep your eyes peeled. <coughs> well, thank you again for that Granny Nanthology run. It was fun to revisit this run. It is a, you know, kind of just fun welcome to the crypt kind of run. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you for having thank me. you again for doing the run. Uh, for anyone who didn't miss it, you can find Maxi's uh, stream at Maxi Lobes. Uh, it should be probably somewhere in chat uh, or on the screen. Uh, but we are going to be right back very quick. We do have one more run for you tonight. Before we do that, I do just want to mention that GG's next all women and friends speedrunning events, Flame Fatales, returns August 18th to the 25th. You can use exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat to find out more information on the schedule and, well, plenty of the runs. As well, any subs, Prime Gaming, and all that, it uh, does help keep GDQ going during the interim between events. So if you're enjoying it, consider doing that. Anyway, we'll be right back very quick. It's always a fun night to look into the world of quarter games, and we do have one more for you. Uh, this one is a lot more recent. I think this also might be a GDQ general debut. I don't think this game's on any Hotfix or mainline events yet. But this game has quickly developed into a nice speedrunning scene, and I know we'll have plenty of uh, knowledge coming your way with the runners we have. Anyway, uh, here is Still Wakes the Deep Any Percent with Captain Ezekiel. Take it away. Thank you, Ek. Hi, everyone. 
like X said, I'm Captain Ezekiel. Uh, I've been on the topics many times before, so you might recognize me if you've watched a few times. Uh, I'm here to run Still Wakes the Deep. This is a new horror game uh, made by the developers of Amnesia 2, A Machine for Pigs. Uh, but before we get into any more of that, I am joined by a very prestigious commentator, a recent SGDQ runner, Shark Hat, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey everybody, yeah, I'm Sharkat87. Uh, you might have seen me here before doing some Dead Space and Outlast games, but uh, yeah, I've been running this game a lot uh, since it came out. It's developed into a very cool speedrun. Uh, we pushed it a lot further than we initially thought, so I'm excited to uh, help explain what's going on here. Uh, and yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so like Shark has said, this is a new game, so uh, what the timer is going to start after I skip the first cutscene. Um, so I will... I will Count it down for you. So three, two, one, and go. Uh, so still wakes the deep. Uh, as we said before, um, it's it's a game made by the Amnesia Two developers. Uh, one thing you're notice right off the right off the rip is bunny hopping. Bunny hopping is a uh, and jumping is just faster in general in this game. Uh, very similar to games like Outlast, and I believe the original Amnesia also has bunny hopping. Uh, but that's a it's a very common thing you'll see me jumping all over the place. But um, Shark, do you want to explain what what Still Wakes the Deep even is? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, so this game is basically this game's been described as the thing on a Scottish oil rig. Um, it's not like a hundred percent like that, but essentially they drill into the uh, the ocean. This weird, you know, eldritch horror creature comes out, starts warping the ship and the crew itself, turning them into monsters. So, you know, a little bit less sort of, you know, deception, kind of like the thing. But that's, like, basically what it is. Uh, and in this case, uh, we're playing as this guy, Kaz, who uh, came on this rig to sort of escape uh, charges that are that are against him. The police are looking for him. And uh, he's getting called to his boss's office here, where he uh, may or may not be in trouble. Uh, but we're actually going to do the first out of bounds, the first skip of the run here on uh, oh, deck we're, one. We were, we were going to try to, but we felt that. Let me jump back up there and try that again. I slipped off the corner. Yeah, so even though this is the beginning of the run, this trick is really hard. This is like one of the hardest tricks in the run right now. Uh, basically, uh, anywhere you... It looks like you could jump to, you can in this game. Uh, so we're just going to be running along these invisible walls, trying to take a shortcut across the deck here. And uh, like I said, a lot of these jumps are, are pretty precise. Uh, the walls are very thin, so it's very easy to, uh, to slip off. But yeah, it just lets us uh, get across here a little bit faster. We're going to grab the screwdriver here from this cutscene, which uh, lets you interact with certain things. Um, some like required uh, things. We're an electrician, uh, if we didn't mention that already. So you have these things where you fix, uh, you know, these fuse boxes and stuff like that. Yeah, very complicated fuse box repair right here. We get rid of the bad one and just move over the good one. We do that about three times this run. I'm not sure if this is the scope of our entire job title here, but that's kind of what we do. Um, but yeah, like Shark was saying, that's one of our first like out of bounds. Uh, this game is very uh, invisible wall heavy, where we can't go out of bounds very easily. Um, and even if we could, we, we don't really get to do much with it. It's a relatively uh, vertical game, um, where you have to go up and down a lot, because obviously we're on a big oil rig, as you can see. Um, but we found a way to circumvent that. We, a lot of hard work has been done by a lot of runners. You know, Shark, uh, Looney, Zarian, uh, all of us here have done a lot to try to find a way to break the game. And the biggest thing we can do is we can jump on invisible walls. So there's a lot of very complicated jumps. And when I say very complicated, I mean very complicated, you'll see later, uh, where we have to do a lot of very specific things to make sure we can jump and go to where we need to go. And we usually only get one try at it before we start to really lose a lot of time. Uh, so you'll see that a lot, especially in the first half of the game. It's very heavy loaded, uh, front loaded, I would say, with these skips. So um, you'll see them as we get to them. But uh, yeah, that first one there, there's a little bit of a fast way to do that where you don't take that slow jump over the door. But um, otherwise, that was probably one of the earlier skips that we found in the... I guess not really that early, but we had like leads to it early before we actually found a way to properly implement it. Yeah. And fortunately, uh, the game has built-in cutscene skips, which is super nice. Uh, the cutscenes in this game are great. Uh, you know, definitely recommend playing this game casually. But obviously, for speedruns, we want to skip those, so uh, we're gonna do that as fast as possible. Yeah, we're coming up to. I think this is the biggest skip in the run, actually, right oh, yeah. now. Under under rig one skip. Um, so. Basically, uh, when you run off a ledge in this game, uh, you have coyote frames, uh, kind of like a lot of other 3D platformers, where uh, there's a certain amount of time after you leave a ledge when you're midair where you can still jump. 
So we're going to do a few coyote jumps here uh, while going out of bounds to get on top of the level. Um, and uh, like Zeke was saying, a lot of the jumps in this game are pretty difficult. This trick is also uh, pretty tough. Very nice. She's going to go around some other invisible walls here. All right, that's all right. Yeah, there's like three pretty tough jumps uh, on this trick here. But this skips the entire level. We're going to go straight to the end. Uh, normally a fairly long level. There's also a few other really, really hard jumps that this obsoletes, and we were very happy about that. Yeah. When let's this came out. Let's go. Let's make sure I do this late. Nice. There we go. Now we just jump across these. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, fortunately this door works. Um, there's a few parts of the run where uh, the game's a bit trigger heavy, where you have to do certain things for the end level uh, door to work. Fortunately, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> and that level, yeah. we can just go straight to the end, which is awesome. That saves so much time. Definitely the biggest skip we have in the run. There are two like harder skips that happened underneath that uh, uh, that leg there, which was just a massive pain. We, like They were way, way harder. And so thankfully, we don't have to do those now, but we have to do that one, which is also kind of a pain. Here's another jump. And I bonked. <laughs> it's the easiest, yeah. hardest skip in the game. I swear, it is so disastrous. This one is also really hard. Like it, it. A lot of jumps in this game look way easier than they actually are, because um, you're supposed to take these monkey bars here. Nice. There we go. Yeah, because they put a bunch of invisible walls up to kind of prevent you from doing what we just did there. Um, so you have to go around them and then also get a coyote jump and jump when you're not uh, touching the ground anymore. Yeah, the coyote jump timing on a lot of these jumps is incredibly strict. Like, if you, if you even slightly miss it, you're, not, you're either going to bonk your head on something or you're not going to get the distance you need um, to get to where you need to go. So, honestly, uh, they're, they're a lot, like Shark said, they're a lot harder than they look. They're very deceptive. That one that we call the easiest, hardest one in the game because, in theory, very easy. It's just, hey, bro, just jump. <laughs> like, the whole thing is just, hey, man, just just jump across. But um, you kind of have to take a wide angle, and you have to do it as late as possible, and otherwise you'll, you'll bonk and you'll miss. And uh, those of us, like, who've been running it since day one still struggle with it. You, you'll, you'll lose a run to it every, like, five runs. Like, you're like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's very easy to mess up, for sure. Um, oh, we just picked up the flashlight as well. Um, that's, I think, the last, I don't want to say upgrade, because there's not really upgrades. Uh, there's not like a lot of progression in this game, but uh, it's it's just a flashlight. There's nothing like too crazy about it, but it is nice because there's a lot of areas of the game that are dark, you know, being a horror game and all. So this just helps us uh, to see where we're going, basically. Oh, that's Finlay, by the way. There's a couple key characters we see a few times. Uh, Finlay is one of them. Uh, it's like who are the others? It's like it's like Finlay. Brody, Brody. shows up a bit, yeah. I want to say it's just them. Oh, and and Roy. Oh, and Roy, yeah. Yeah, this game has a lot of good characters. Uh, we get a little bit of the dialogue in this run. Uh, the voice acting is amazing in this game. Um, another another reason I recommend checking yeah. it out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, this, it, this is all done uh, in, in Scottish. Uh, and I say Scottish as though it's like another language, but it essentially is <laughs> uh, in this game. It's very well done. This is actually some of the best... VA I've ever seen in a in what a, we would consider to be a double A title. Um, it's very very good and you know really high quality. And uh, uh, another runner, uh, Nico Hart, put it a very good way. It's a very humanizing way of the game being done, right? Like it all feels very genuine, um, and all reactions and and such are all incredibly genuine, which is why I I like it so much. And you would think that a game where the main character is constantly talking, you know, every time you jump, he, you know, makes some kind of sound. If, you, if, you, if you're, you know, over like a large gap, you jump, he, you know, he'll swear or he'll, you know, exclaim something. That can get really annoying really fast, but it never does. Like, even after many hours of playing this, I haven't gotten tired of it yet. Yeah, it's pretty good. So the whole, the whole point of what we're doing here is uh, we have to get everything working again. That's like the whole point of what we're doing. Um, and we have to navigate through the whole oil rig. So here's one of the, uh, another big skip that we love that was found. Um, I do this right. Oh, I gotta miss that jump there. Oh, no, no, no. There, now we're gonna do this in, uh, hard mode. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, we, yeah. Let camera. me just restart the checkpoint because that's gonna be impossible yeah. to do. There's a bug that exists where if you hit the ground, especially here, um, but it happens a lot when you hit the ground in water. 
Um, you will constantly slam on the ground. We don't really know why it happens. Yeah, it, it's basically the the same camera you get when you get a hard land, but you can still move around. Like you don't get stuck in place. It's it's like very very buggy. Um, there we go. It happens in a few different places. We might get it here a little bit because I hard landed. Oh boy. Yeah, and then it's it's just yeah, it's, it makes it, makes it, it really looks awkward. so silly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that skip basically let us climb around and, and skip the entire Gibbo sequence there, which is usually a very slow and drawn out crawler sequence so that that skip actually saves a lot of time uh and and was also one of the bigger ones that was found yeah that saves at least 40 seconds i'm pretty sure that's yeah it was a it was a big one there of, of, of mostly just going through shimmies and stuff like that yeah those shimmies like this one right here are all very very slow so when we get to avoid them it's very nice shimmy skipping is another big thing in this game there's a lot of shimmy skips that we'll be attempting to do um, almost every skip's gonna take me at least a, an extra try because it is not easy to do these. Um, and, and like like uh, we mentioned earlier, this run is brand new. This this thing has only had like a month at most of work put into it at this point. Um, so we're not still super comfortable with a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, Shark is current record holder, uh, and I was former record holder. It's been tossed around a few times, and it's it's one of those things where you'll do a bunch of runs and you'll still mess up a lot of skips, even though you'll sit there and practice them because the run's still just super new. Yeah, it's 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 so new that none of us are hundred percent consistent on everything yet, and the route just keeps changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it'll just it'll take a while to uh, to stabilize a bit. Uh, I think this is our first heater, uh, right? Yeah, so heaters in this game. We don't know why. <laughs> like, we don't understand really the purpose of these. They're, you are forced to do these. Um, you have to do three of them, and it's just to warm Kaz up after he's been in water. They serve no other purpose. They, they do nothing else at all. Quite literally. They're not even like a save point. They're not anything. <laughs> like... Yeah, you just get some dialogue, basically, and that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, what the game does is it prevents you from interacting with certain things, so this door would not open yeah. until you do the heater, or, like, later you can't break locks or things until you do it. So it just locks you in a single room, usually, until you do that. So haven't found a way to skip that yet, but, you know, maybe we'll skip yeah, all of yeah. at some point. Maybe someday. <laughs> those would be nice time saves, actually, being able to skip those. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention about the b-hopping is it's pretty straightforward if it's in a, uh, a single hallway. Uh, there is a little bit of timing to it. It's not crazy precise like a lot of games, but you do get much better b-hops with good timing. Uh, most of us use scroll for jump, so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but for example, it's not like uh, like Outlast 1 has frame-perfect b-hops. Game runs at 62 FPS, so obviously those are, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult to do them at all. Um, fortunately, in this game, it makes the movement way more smooth because they're... They're relatively easy to just to get one, but to get like good ones in a full chain and not bonk anything uh, gets pretty difficult. So there's a nice difficulty curve uh, with the run um, and trying to optimize like doing the exact right amount of uh, you know b hops and kind of threading in between collision, not bonking and stuff. Um, yeah, so. this is definitely it's super nice too because it, it enables you to do things you wouldn't normally be able to like skip or do because of how fast it actually is. Anybody and now we're coming up on what I, what. Could argue, be arguably considered the hardest skip in the game. Um, two back-to-back -back things. Uh, with a lot of practice, it gets a lot easier. I say that, but that's, you know, just, <laughs> this is where I mess it up. But we're coming up on lifeboats. Lifeboats has a very, uh, very, it's very hard to explain. Very precise sequence of skips. Uh, we're gonna first try to do a shimmy skip here. I'm gonna back into this corner. Jump and jump that. Nice. Now we yeah, you... skipped that, that shimmy sequence. Oh god, I almost just fell through. Yeah, then we can just do a little bit of a uh, little bit of platforming here. Uh, and and so with the shimmies, the same thing as before. Uh, they put invisible walls to block you from just walking mm -hmm. onto it. And there's a prompt that forces you to get on it. But as long as you're not holding forward when you're looking at it, uh, it won't pull you onto it. So we can just run on the ledge. And then here we can just do some platforming out of bounds and uh, try to navigate to the end. Because normally you're supposed to do this whole sequence where you try to fix the lifeboats, they fall in the water, you got to answer a phone call, go down some stairs, all this stuff. So we're going to try to skip all of that by uh, doing some precise jumps here to land back and down past a locked door that would usually not open until we do all that stuff. Nice. Whew. That, the th those... The, the, <laughs> 
360 makes it work every time, right? Yeah, it makes it work every time. The, that that <laughs> skip is incredibly was incredibly hard when it first was, and it's still very hard. Um, because you miss, as you saw, you miss any one of those jumps and you die. Um, one of them is uh, worse because if you land below, you'll hit a checkpoint, and that will actually ruin the whole skip, and you can no longer do it. Um, so we were able to skip like two minutes worth of this level by doing that, uh, which which honestly is a godsend. Uh, that, that skip is the hardest part about that skip. Um, arguably, is that very last jump there where I had to go over that railing. There's actually a big invisible wall on top of that railing, and it'll always force you onto the side you don't want to be on, which will almost always kill you if you time the jump wrong. So thankfully, we were able to get it first try. The jump before is also a little finicky, but. Honestly, that, missing that one isn't as bad because the checkpoint's right there. Um, so I was pretty happy with the way that one went. Are you doing the, the new strat here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just before this run, we were kind of messing around here, and I accidentally found a faster way to do this little jump here. So normally you have to climb up this uh, laundry basket and then wait like a few seconds and then climb again. I, know, I figured out that if you just go on top of this thing and you jump, <laughs> you just make it up in one jump. It's actually so much faster. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't look very fast, but like getting onto that little uh, laundry basket has a climbing animation. And then for some reason, after you do one climbing animation, you cannot do another for like two or three seconds. So I skipped all that. So huge time saves just before this run we found. <laughs> I wanted to answer a question in chat uh, asking about fall damage. So yes, this game does have fall damage. Um, it's pretty aggressive, I would say. You cannot fall very far uh, before you die. Um, you also uh, get this thing we call broken legs, where uh, if you fall from too far but you don't die, uh, it restricts your movement for a while and you need to wait uh, sometimes a very long time before you can sprint again. So yeah. we usually try to avoid that as much as possible. We're also just going to run past this guy here. Uh, all the enemies do kill you in one hit in this game. There's not that many enemy encounters. But we do have to be careful of that because, uh, like I said, you, you just die if, if they touch you. Yeah, uh, we are playing on story here. So there was actually a lot of development in the recent weeks about story versus standard difficulty in this game. And it all happened because uh, we thought you would just play on story and there'd be no difference. Uh, all the AI is basically turned off on story. Otherwise, it's the same run, we thought. Uh, on standard, however, it was discovered by uh, Zarian um, that if you are on standard, certain invisible walls don't exist. And one of them played a pretty big part in the discovery of what we call a dare escape later in the game. But we then found a way to do on story. But uh, we play on story because there's really no reason to play on standard. There's like time saves, time losses between the two, depending on AI. Um, so we just play on story, even though we did play on standard for a little bit because of the a dare escape. Yeah, it's it's debatable still which is exactly faster. The the route difference is honestly not that big. Uh, some people like in my PB, I start on standard and I switch the story like halfway through the run. Um, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. Um, oh, we should explain this. Yeah, so this is Muir Skip. Uh, it's the name of the enemy here. Uh, so when we return to the deck here, like kind of like before, we can do some platforming out of bounds. We're gonna skip a pretty significant chunk of this level uh, to actually get out of bounds. We did a little double jump there. Um, and basically, there's certain weird geometry or collision where uh, if you get stuck in it and you jump, you can get multiple jumps. Uh, I, I'm not sure why. I think it must consider you like standing for some reason. Um, I, I don't. I don't know how that works really, but we're we're, we're, still, we're still trying to figure that out. But it's very cool uh, because it lets us get out of bounds there, and it actually obsoletes a way harder and more annoying, inconsistent uh, version of the out of bounds. So. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, very nice. We got back in bounds here. Uh, you do have to uh, make this lift go up or else this elevator here doesn't work. Yeah, that those the series of those jumps are actually relatively consistent. I did I did try to get on top of that barrel to just kind of skip going around. Seems like five, five to ten seconds, but I missed it once and then I missed it again. And I was like, you know, whatever. So I just walked around it. Um, I did the hard part, but not the easy part, which is usually how it goes. Uh, but yeah, that, that skip um, is another very good skip. It was originally found by uh, Abukamu with uh, going up a much more annoying method we used to have to do, which is jumping on a, a handle of a door, um, which is way more inconsistent. But now that we have that method, it works works very yeah, you, well. You, you had to have a door close and have it get stuck on your body. So you had to be in a precise position and then you had to get it closed just in the right spot so that it would give you that stuck state. And then you'd have to get three jumps in a row and then land on top of the thin door. 
Um, in this case, it's a very easy, consistent jump. You do one, and then that's it. You're out of bounds. So it's, it's way better. There's a big scripted FPS drop there that only happens when you're running OBS for some reason, and I don't know why. <laughs> I get that sometimes there too, and it's really bad. <laughs> it can get really bad where you shouldn't even try to bunny hop because you'll get stuck in the air and like you'll drop right where you are because the FPS drops so low. Um, but yeah, that, that is another one of the bigger skips of the run. We still have another one coming up. And then in the latter parts of the game, we have uh, we have more skips now in the later parts of the game. So you actually are kind of doing skips throughout like, basically the whole run now. Um, it used to be very front-loaded, um, which, you know, was fine for the most part. But now, like, we got a lot of difficult skips. Though, actually, I'd say that was... I don't know why I said that Lifeboats was arguably the hardest skip. We know what the hardest skip is. <laughs> like, and I forgot yeah. about it. I was kind of coping a little bit. But yeah. there's a skip later in the game called a dare skip. And Hello. we kind of mentioned really it a moment ago. Yeah, yeah. it's... That is going to be brutal, and uh, yeah. chat, you are fully allowed to laugh at me for it, because it is all of us struggle with it. All runners We're all it. really bad at it, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, really, it's, really, it's really hard. Definitely um, the hardest. You know, on, on that note, there actually are uh, a good number of strats that uh, either nobody's done or the, or the record doesn't have currently. Um, there are some, like, annoyingly difficult skips uh, later on that don't even oh. save that much time, but, it, it, you know, it's like, oh... You get a first try, save a few seconds, miss it, the run's over, you know, and there's, there's a lot of stuff like that that we're still kind of working out. Um, mm -hmm. They're very feel-based kind of kind of tricks, so... But yeah, like we said, I mean, the game is still pretty new, so the, the route isn't completely set in stone. We're still figuring it out. Um, yeah. Like some of the tricks we talked about earlier, they might get obsoleted even, and we don't have to worry about it. I'm hoping that kind of happens. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's one of those things where, like, when you see a run like this, or, like, you, you can even look like runs that, like, Shark Hat runs, like, Outlast and whatnot, these, these very movement-based horror FPS runs where um, you wonder how, like, these he gets so consistent at them. It's, well, the run's been around for a while, right? And when the run's been around for a while, you get a lot of time to put into getting good at these things, and this game just hasn't been around long enough for us to, like, be very comfortable with a lot of things. Um, which is why, like, we're still in that state where there are certain skips that we don't, we know exist and we know save time, but we just simply don't go for it because if you went for them, you just wouldn't finish a run. Uh, one of them that we is at towards the end of the game called the Roy, uh, Roy skip. The bridge. Um, oh man, that is. I don't think I've actually ever hit that before, to be honest. It saves a good chunk of time, but no one goes for it because of it, its risk level, um, and the fact that it's just it's it's horrible it's just bad <laughs> yeah you have to do a crazy late jump and then land on an invisible platform that you don't actually land on you slide off and you got to slide off the right way to hit the checkpoint um yeah it's 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 if that doesn't sound very fun you'd be you'd be right <laughs> Yeah, and That's if you miss like, it, I'm you like, lose like a minute. <laughs> I'm thinking, if I just don't learn it, somebody will find another way to do it, and then I just don't have to learn it at all. That's kind of the, what I'm hoping for. That's the, that is the strat, honestly. I mean, that's kind of what I was doing with the two under rig skips before we got the new one, where uh, the, we had two jumps before. At the start of the game, I did that big jump where I skipped the whole level. We used to have two other jumps that happened instead of that. It was the most miserable, horrible yeah. experience. Because the current skip is not easy. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's almost trivial compared to how how bad those were. Like I don't think I I think we were talking about this before. There's this shimmy skip you can do. I I maybe got it like once ever. Like it's it's it was so bad. <laughs> yeah. And now here we have a helicopter skip. But speaking of skips we don't do, there's another version of this that was discovered that does save time where you ride the helicopter blade up very hard. No one does it. Yeah, it's insane. I it, it's actually insane that it's even possible to be honest. But this is the, a version of a skip that was uh, discovered by the Demented Sound, and then this part of it was discovered by me, where we kind of jump around the invisible walls and get through this little hole to essentially skip going all the way around up top there and grabbing onto the helicopter, uh, and honestly saves a good chunk of time, and, and, and it's, a, it's a very good skip because it's not too difficult, but if you do mess up any of the jumps, you will die. Uh, it's basically the theme of this game. If you, if you mess up, you die. That's like, that is the game. It's like, you made a mistake, you die. Like, <laughs> that's just kind of how it works. Yeah, so the uh, the crazy, like, hel like helicopter blade fling strat would put us, like, I think around uh, the e like the very end of this section. Yeah, it's pretty close. Like, around here, yeah. But otherwise, we're just going to b-hop to the end here. Uh, short little... 
uh, indoor section. We actually have one of the longer levels in the game coming up after this uh, when we return to engineering. Um, we did find that if you go straight to the, the end door, it doesn't work, um, which is very sad. So you do actually have to do some of the objectives. There's there's like some potential to break it at some point, uh, but otherwise we're just going to be uh, we're going to be trying to dodge one of the enemies um, a good amount. It's one of the the bigger levels for actually having to avoid enemies in the game. Like like this one, you can see a lot of levels don't even have enemies. And kind of like we were talking about with the standard story thing, it's one of those levels where it, it like it, it it's actually just the same. <laughs> on either one yeah th this one coming up was actually uh was actually the first like biggest talking points about standard and story because this is where it uh, genuinely made a difference with ai yep. uh whether or not you're on standard or story because on standard it was this whole area is actually faster because the ai is out of your way in a lot of the situations you need to be in here um and it made it a lot faster. However, uh, on story, he's really slow and their AI is kind of turned off a little bit. So which means they're in your way, but it doesn't make a difference because on standard story, regardless, you get one shot if you touch them. Um, so if they're kind of blocking a door because they're so slow on story, you can't really get around them. You kind of have to wait. Uh, but we have found ways to circumvent that a little bit uh, with, with some consistency. But um, this was the first level that gets talked about when, when that was brought up. Yeah, this level is a little more random on story, but we have some pretty good strats now to deal with it still. Um, on standard, if, if you make any noises, the enemies will chase you, like if you move and stuff. On story, they just sit there. If you run around, they, they just don't engage you. If you throw props to make noise, though, they will still move a little bit. So that's mostly what we're going to do to try to manipulate them, because they end up just kind of sitting where we need to go and, and then just not moving. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so it, it, yeah, it's a little bit random. If they sway just the wrong direction, you can die. Yep. And uh, speaking of, like, this is this enemy that we're coming up on is a deer, and uh, love this guy because uh, he he is actually probably the problematic enemy of the game. Like, he, like uh, everything that's kind of annoying about the run is because of him. Like, <laughs> it really is just because of him. Uh, you'll notice we jump upstairs. Um, it's only because going upstairs is just horribly slow. And going downstairs is also horribly slow. Uh, you, you're really seeing it's cut by like half. So it's better just to jump up and downstairs. But we have to be careful because like the shark said earlier, the smallest fall will break your leg. Um, so we have to time our jumps off stairs and upstairs to be pretty precise so that we don't accidentally break our leg. Yeah, and even the threshold for just getting a hard land animation is, is not even that much. But yeah, it's it, it's good to mention because a lot of times you'll you'll be walk you'll jump down a really small staircase and you don't even move that fast when you're jumping down it and it, it's like all right why are you doing that but you, the going down the stairs is, st is still slower. I must be. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here is now we get introduced to Adair. He's gonna kind of pull up over there. We're gonna run down here. There's a little spray can just below us. We're gonna grab that. And I'm gonna toss it to my left. We need to get Adair to move. So it's a thermos rather. So Adir should do a line here. He's like, what's that? Or ah, or something like that, which means he's going to get away from in front of the ladder because that's usually where he's camped is right here in front of the ladder. If we don't do that, he just chills here. And then we have to like, we do nothing because he's just going to kill us. Um, on standard, he would run away. Um, he would follow us from the second we enter the room, basically. And uh, it's a little bit different. But this time, uh, we just throw something. This puzzle, set in stone, same switches every time. If you do one incorrectly, though, it resets all of them. I made that mistake one time. It's very miserable. Yeah, I remember doing, like, first couple runs. I'm struggling a little bit to actually remember what the combination was. <laughs> It's, it's always weird learning a new run like that, or like when everybody's learning. Uh, it's, it's just like so much happening, so much to learn all at once. But yeah, yeah for, fortunately there's no randomness to that, so you don't have to deal with that at least. Yeah, thankfully uh, we don't so actually deal with much RNG in this run. Jesus. So yeah, this is the last step to reset the generator here. This is the main objective. After this, we're pretty much just trying to get back to the beginning of the level. There is one fuse box we have to interact with. Um, which is very important. Uh, otherwise, you can hard block your game and be unable to beat it. 
Um, that's actually a pretty common uh, soft lock. They're going to be, I believe they're supposed to be patching this game this month to fix a few of those uh, soft locks and hard locks. So uh, if you counter that in your casual playthrough, they uh, they are planning on fixing that. <laughs> They're working on it soon. So this whole last part of engineering here, we're kind of running away from Adair. He's not really a threat at all, even on standard, except for just that part right there on standard. He's a little bit of a threat, but otherwise, he's a he's a big pushover. We're gonna kind of just run away from him. Uh, it, it's like even casual, like like we kind of made the compar a comparison before. Is like this game is a lot like. You know, thematically, it's very, like, the thing. Um, but gameplay-wise, it's very Outlast meets Amnesia. And uh, you're basically running away from an enemy you cannot fight back against. Um, and you're kind of using parkour to get you to where you need to go. Uh, but a lot of the times, the enemies aren't really much a big threat in this one. The biggest threat in this game is actually the environment. Um, I think you're more likely to accidentally die walking off an edge than you are to die to the enemy. <laughs> Yeah, gravity is a little bit worse in this game, I think, than the, uh, the monsters. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the part I was talking about. You actually can just walk by this. The game doesn't stop you from walking back to the beginning if you don't do the fuse, but you can't actually end the level unless you do that. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to fix that soft lock if they're just going to make it so you don't have to do that, or if you do skip it, the level still ends, or maybe they'll put it in biz wall somewhere so you can't. I, there is we'll a see. door there that's open. I imagine they'll probably just close the door and not let you open it until you, until you do it. That would make sense, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see route-wise uh, if we find any new skips or anything based on, you know, them fixing the soft locks or if, you know, anything gets patched, you know, to see how that goes. Yeah, this is like the scariest part of the story with Adair here because he kind of just hangs out by the staircase. Yeah, like I and threw that randomly, thing there and yeah. he just was hanging out anyways. He didn't care. <laughs> he just did yeah, not care at all. He kind of just randomly sways there. Um, but yeah, luckily we didn't uh, get trolled. All right, now we kind of have to chill here for a minute until the phone rings. So that's what triggers opening up this door. He's just over there hitting the, hitting the wall. He's a little upset. Uh, we're heading to uh, Leg A next, right? We got a pretty cool yep. skip coming up. This this was one of the earliest skips found, and I think this was also a pretty big one. Um, I believe this was also found by the Demented Salad. Uh, this skip um, basically abuses Death Warping, which we do a few times in the run, but this is the first time we really do it. Um, where basically we have to climb all the way down this leg, right? Um, but we can hit some checkpoints with some fancy footwork. And by fancy footwork, I mean jumping to our death. And the way that's going to happen is we're going to kind of jump at a specific angle here and kind of use some air mobility to crash land us right where a checkpoint is. So that's going to happen by right here. I'm going to jump and I'm going to kind of angle myself to die right here. We hit the checkpoint at the bottom right. That's one of them. Granted, the next one we do here isn't a death uh, warp, but it is a, a hard jump. Uh, so now we're going to spawn down here. And now I'm going to line myself up here. Hopefully I get this first try. I'm gonna walk and jump off. I think I got that. No, I did not. <laughs> That's good. close. Yeah, this, this this part is a lot harder than the the very beginning. Um, we did used to have a death warp here, uh, mm -hmm. but somehow you just don't die if you land on this invisible wall. Like there, there's yeah. some falls you do here that look like you should die. Um, Double black screen. We love that. Yeah, I don't know why that happens either. This time I should land on it. Nice. And then now there's another drop right here. Perfect. Yeah, like how do you, how do you how do you not die from that? Yeah, I, I we don't, don't we don't know. Like there are some drops <laughs> that just do not do damage, and uh, that is one of them. Yeah, I think there's just some collision where you just don't take damage. Um, I don't know how it's programmed exactly, but a lot of out of bounds collision also just doesn't do that. So it must right. be something they apply to the floor. I don't know. Um, are you doing a? Uh, you're, you're using controller coming up next, right? Should we talk and, about and, that? Uh, I don't use it here, where, where like you get the three second time but I do use it later in the run where we have to. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so if you d okay, so there's it's it's something that gets discussed still a lot, um, where we have to bind to scroll for optimal bunny hopping, right? That's usually what will happen in most games that have bunny hopping. However, in this game, there are certain areas where you have to grab onto something and then use your what would, what would normally be your jump button to propel yourself forward, but it doesn't work unless you have like a really fast scroll, uh, free scroll mouse. 
Yeah, because you're supposed to hold the button usually uh, for this like underwater dash move, but obviously you can't hold the button down if it's a scroll input. Uh, so you either got to use a different, you either got to change the bind uh, mid run, you know, or use something like a controller or have like a crazy fast uh, free scroll mouse. But um, mo most, I think most people end up just using a using a controller. Uh, it, it's because the dash button is like triple bound to like three things. It's also it's it's like jump and underwater dash and something else I think. Um, yeah. So, but it, it doesn't matter that much. Like this part here, if you do some dashes, it saves like maybe a couple seconds. Uh, but there's a part later, uh, I think we might have said, where you have to dash at least once. It's required, uh, or else you can't beat the level. Yeah, as you can uh, see, the game doesn't really know how to handle the fact that we changed it to score wheel, so it says, please hold, you know, height, width, input, 40. It doesn't really know what to... Like the, they don't really update the tooltips for the fact that we have it bound on the scroll wheel now, uh, which is, I think is very funny. But as you saw earlier, I did a jump from up above and didn't take any fall damage or break my leg or anything. These areas right here, for some reason, they just didn't program in fall damage. So I'm gonna do it right here too, where I kind of jump from up here. That would normally cause a hard fall, but for some reason it just doesn't. We don't really know why. Very important. You gotta pull that switch before you go in here, or else the screen doesn't go up. Uh, it does let you jump in there. You just get stuck, and you you can't do anything. You'll just you'll yeah. drown. You die, you and you get an achievement. You, you get a little you get a little funny achievement that lets you know that you did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got a very cool uh, auto scroller here. You just hit this trigger, which makes the water start going up, and then you just gotta ride it up to the top. Uh, you know, like a lot of games, we don't really have any tech at the moment to, to gain a lot of height. Uh, I'm kind of just chilling, floating. That's really the whole idea here. Just kind of waiting. We basically wait for the water to push us up, then we go to the next area. Um, I guess we're coming up on... To uh, gain a lot of height? The big uh, elevator ride up, right? That's part of the game, I want to say. It, it's really hard to remember kind of which part of the game you're at, because you do uh, go, it, it's a lot, if you ever played Resident Evil 1 or anything along those lines, uh, you would know th uh, that you kind of go through a lot of the same areas, right? Back and forth through like the mansion in that game, whereas in this game, it's very similar. You go back and forth through the same areas over and over. I think like we go through engineering and accommodation like three times each. We're gonna do a couple bee hops here. Get into the water or the oil. This is actually not water. It's like mostly oil, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense why we're able to swim through it so easily. But you know, it is what it is. All right. Christ. Oh, spider here. Oh. Did I lose my commentator? I might have. Uh, you still... You still alive here? I just want to make sure everything's still working. I think, I think Sharkat may have disconnected. Okay. He vanished. Hello? He did vanish on us. We'll, uh, we'll keep going. Hopefully Shark returns alive. Uh, but right now, uh, we're kind of going through the legs of this... Uh, the oil rigs. We're kind of underneath it. The whole... This is this is a, a QTE that happens a few times. I think this is the only one where we actually have to do anything about it. Um, except for the one by Rennick later. Uh, otherwise, we skip them. On standard, you get hit by another one right up top here, but we're actually avoiding it. Now we got a little uh, shimmy skip. Normally we'd shimmy across this, but we're gonna back up into it and do like a B hop across. Kind of skips us from having to go over that normally. All right. Now the whole idea of what we're doing here is we, we've essentially like 
done something. I actually don't know like the proper like oil rig engineering terminology what what we actually just did. But we, we essentially like did something to the legs so that they could drain out or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. We can't hit this button too early or it'll actually soft lock our game and the and the elevator just simply will not come down. So we're kind of waiting for this. There's another little auto scroller we have. We had a, we have just a couple auto scrollers here. I'm gonna kind of position right here so that the elevator clips into me so I get behind the door as it comes down. Save it's like a second or two. It's nothing really crazy, but it lets us get on this a little bit faster. Yeah, F, F in the chat for Shark Head. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. May have lost internet or power. But yeah, this game, uh, it was much earlier. I did see the question in chat. This game did just come out not long ago, just a few weeks ago. Um, but a lot of us were playing it casually. Thought the game was a really cool casual playthrough. I think it's I think it's a very nice, uh, you know, somewhat immersive horror experience. But we uh, we we knew uh, that it could be a hard one to run because it felt kind of slow. Uh, but then we got we got to work on it, and we had a lot of good runners and and, and glitch finders help us really break this game apart. And we're we're really happy with the way it's turned out. All right. We are now, I believe now we're coming up on a deer skip. I think I think we are now up on a deer skip is coming up in just a moment. Um, and we don't have the emotional support of Shark Hat, so I don't know how we're getting through this, but uh, this whole part of the game is we need to get to Roy. Like the whole idea is we we're trying to save Roy. Roy needs his insulin. Now I'm gonna tell you guys some things. As, as a diabetic myself, there is a misportrayal in this game that I, I I have complained about since day one, which is that Roy. This is this all. This whole game happens within the span of one day. Uh, Roy doesn't have his insulin for one day, and he dies. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It's not how that works. I appreciate what they were going for. I feel included as a diabetic in the storyline of this game, but that is not how it works. I'll keep it a buck with you guys, just just so you're all aware. Not how it works. Uh, we're gonna try to do a skip here. If I do this correctly, we jump over this. Oh, oh, hold on. Pause, chef. We'll do it again. We're trying to hit an invisible wall here. Oh, my goodness. They jump on that one. Let's try this again. Here we jump over, and we miss. <laughs> this this jump is relatively new. Uh, so, I'm not super warmed up on it. We're gonna try that one more time. If we don't get it, we'll just do it the normal way. Welcome back, Shark. Thank you. I think I'm back now. <laughs> we had a moment there. So you made go. it just in time before our day skip. I'm so happy you can make it back. Nice. Okay, oh yeah, go. this is this is super new. Yeah, I I actually haven't even worked on this too much yet. The skip like is, is yeah. very new. Yeah. This one's pretty tough. I think the jumps at the end are are pretty hard. Yeah, I'm doing like a, a little bit of a modified version where I simply just jump over the invisible wall just to land where we need to land, take the slight hard fall. These jumps are a little hard. So there's like an invisible wall here. I'm just going to jump through and land right here. And that skips like a whole soda walking section. Granted, that definitely lost time compared to doing it normally because I had to do it like three times. But um, now, uh, yeah, now we're on the the skip. This this one is a, is a big one. And this is definitely the hardest one, like 100%. Yeah, uh, this is gonna be a nightmare. I'm just gonna say, or we do a first try and it's poggers. But uh, I'm gonna try to focus on it and let Shark explain everything that's happening because it, it kind of relies on me hitting a very difficult jump. That's that it's, it's definitely gonna take me more than one try. Uh, but I want to be able to show yeah. off the whole skip. So uh, here goes nothing. this invisible wall and get on the shimmy and it puts us just low enough to get the objective without having to go uh, down the elevator and now we're going to try to do some precise jumps to now get to the the bottom level and skip a bunch of stuff so this jump here is very precise you got to hit a very specific timing uh to land on this pipe and then after that you also then need to let go forward so that you don't uh fall off um, yeah it is a nightmare jump nice and then this jump is also not easy 
Yeah, you because you gotta like go, you gotta like run up the slope to get height and then land on another uh, invisible floor. And uh, if you go too far left, you bonk. Um, it's just, yeah, the, the, these like first two jumps is, is the hardest part, I think, for sure. I mean, the, yeah. none of the trick is easy. <laughs> this whole trick but, is just brutal, like through and through. Yeah, it's like very specific timing after pressing forward that you need to jump and then also let go. Uh, yeah, like we said, very precise. So now we're going to very carefully try to platform around some of this stuff here. What did I just do? <laughs> we're, we actually just died is what we did. <laughs> uh, I've actually never fallen through that little uh, crevice right there. There's this skip is just very hard. Like everything about this skip is in incredibly difficult and is 100% the current like run killer. Uh, I yeah. do have to reload the checkpoint when you die, or else it will not let you progress. Yeah, it gets weird sometimes. I think if you, I think it's if, if you take a death, you still keep the old objective, uh, but it doesn't work properly. Um, a bit weird yeah this this skip is just incredibly brutal yeah so the, the original version this invisible wall we're hugging up against now um, this is the one where if you play on standard it does not exist uh, fun fact if you load in this area on standard and then switch to story the invisible wall actually loads back in uh, so it's it's a hundred percent tied to the difficulty it's very odd um, but yeah then this was found and this is a little bit faster so you know now we're uh, now we're doing the the much harder version here. Uh, so now we just need to try to drop back and bounce here. Try to land on this invisible wall to avoid uh, getting broken legs. Very nice. There we go. And we're through. Nice that skip is just so it's so hard. Everything yeah. about it is just so awful. And like I said, if you did not get that objective earlier by uh, crouching into the wall, um, this would not work. You would turn the valve, not you would not get the cutscene, this ladder wouldn't work. Um, if you went over and tried to open these doors over here, they wouldn't work. Um, which is a bit of a shame, because like I said, you can get down here much earlier. Uh, but that's been an interesting part of the routing process, is figuring out what exactly the game wants and uh, what we can actually skip. Nice uh, chase sequence here. Yeah, these are the parts of the game that also remind me a lot of Outlast. These like chase sequences where you're trying to like do stuff and like vault over things, getting away from the enemies. Oh, I'm stuck on that. Yeah, this whole section, this part right here, all very scripted. Um, we're just getting chased by Adair, and we're just gonna go over here and light the flare. And then Adair is going to kind of run into the flare. <laughs> we don't know why he does it. He's like, he really doesn't want us to do this. A lot of it just jumps up, too. He just <laughs> catches it, too. He, like, trying to alley-oop it or something. We don't know what's going on. Now we have the same chase sequence, but now Adair is on fire. <laughs> and so we're going back this way as this whole thing starts to collapse. Um, now we're in, the, like, the latter half of the game where we have... The skips we're picking up again. Like, we kind of had our skip list, like, engineering uh, and, and whatnot. And now we're going into a couple back-to-back, -back, uh, which was this Adair skip, which went better than I thought it would. I'll be quite honest. Like, I thought it was going to be there for a lot longer. Like, <laughs> in practice, you can sit there for, like, 20 minutes never getting that jump. Um, I'm happy it went as well as it did. But now um, we're going to do... Uh, a another monkey what's called the monkey bar skip this was like the first yep. monkey bar skip that was like pretty substantial but we're also going to restart checkpoint this is going to give us for some reason when we restart checkpoint here we get our movement speed back normally you would walk very slowly through this area but if we restart the checkpoint we're actually zooming we are not supposed to be running through here it's so much faster yeah because i mean even normal move speed is faster there but then v hopping is even faster so yeah. Uh, yeah, this and is a crazy one of time. Being able to run here also for some reason makes your shimmies and you're crawling faster. Uh, so all of this stuff is sped up by like a noticeable margin. Yeah, I didn't know that for a long time, but yeah, shimmies, ladders, all that stuff. If you hold sprint, you do move faster. And I just started saving so much time everywhere because I didn't know you could do that. Um, you know, most games they'll do that. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> <"Man."> <laughs> Yeah. They definitely um, don't. It's definitely super strange. Yeah. It is nice that that saves time, though, yeah. Um, and yeah, so here comes Monkey Bar Skip. 
So uh, we need to do a pretty late coyote jump uh, to get enough distance here, but also avoid some hazards. There's this like goop that likes to launch you the opposite direction. Uh, there's a bunch of invisible walls you got to get over that are deceptively high. Oh, I hit the thing. Oh, yeah, there's the goop. Yeah, so sometimes if you hit that, it'll boost you back inbounds and you're fine, but a lot of the time it just bounces you off. Um, I think the majority, if not almost all of the world records in uh, this game so far have, have <laughs> missed this. Yeah, it, they Every, always miss their first try, like... Yep. It's yeah, this... Is kind of... Do a coyote that, I guess we're over here now. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so there's the other version of that where it boosts you over there. Uh, you can land on the bottom floor as well, but it's, yeah, it's it's a tough trick. It's funny, too, because, like, it it only saves time if you get it first try, and, like, a lot of people miss it first try. Um, yeah. It feels, it feels bad, yeah. But nice. That was that was, that was was a good second try. It's cool seeing the, uh, the back up there you get launched. I think it looks pretty cool. And getting the back up there is nice. Now we're at the part of the game where I'm going to have to switch the controller in a moment to do the underwater, you know, I guess, launching, jumping, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this is the only part of the game where you're required to do an underwater dash uh, or else you can't beat the game. Unless we find a way around it, which is, is possible. Yeah. Um, but so far we haven't. I'm going to trigger this cutscene and I'm going to switch to my handy dandy controller. Hi, Finley. And now we are going to get in the water. That is the most optimal time to switch a controller because cutscene time and load times are removed. Um, so we just use that opportunity to switch a controller. Um, you can't do it going up the ladders, but it's a little bit of a hard timing to do. Um, so we'll show you here in a second what we're talking about. Uh, over here in the water, we're gonna jump down and there's these things on the ground we have to grab. Normally, you can just grab them but eventually you hit this little part right here where you have to hold A to dash, and that would otherwise be what your scroll wheel is, but we can't do that. So we're just gonna instead do it like this, using the controller, um, and then climb back up, and then we should be done using the controller. I'm gonna get rid of it now. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you, you gotta like awkwardly like put it down and then switch back to like mouse and keyboard really <laughs> yes. fast there after the ladder. It's, yeah, it's funny. It's very weird. There's another tiny little skip here I'm gonna try to do. I just bonked my head on nothing. Uh, where we jump up on this. Come on, buddy, look at that. I just oh, jumped. Yeah, this is this is super new, yeah. I just jumped straight to the moon. Okay, there we go. We're gonna jump up on here. Hope I can do this. Fuck. Nah, nah, I missed a jump. We're just gonna do it normally. Almost, there's yeah. a Dude, that version is so harsh. <laughs> there's a time there's a little time save there where you can jump and hit the checkpoint early and do a retry. I'm not even sure if RTA that's even friendly, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't think it is. RTA, um, actually, yeah, I'm not even sure. Yeah, there's two versions of that. Um, that that version is probably a little bit faster, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a hard jump. That's a common theme in this game. Uh, it's a hard that, jump, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a small little time save there uh, that we did. Um, you're supposed to climb up some monkey bars there too, but you can just grab the ledge right away if you jump up. A little precursor to uh, you, you do the uh, are you gonna do the the fall yeah. skip at the end? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, Shout it's out hard to, to Living Looney Bin for this next uh, one, yes, yeah. So I guess we'll explain it now. Um, but basically, you go to this part where uh, it, it, it's a scripted fall if you grab this specific bar, uh, the game forces you to fall. It actually kind of trolls you because it gives you the prompt to hold to, to like hang on. But it makes you fall anyway. I, I was so confused my first playthrough. I was like, dude, I'm holding it. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it turns out it's just that one rung on the, on the monkey bars that makes you fall. So uh, what Zeke's going to try to do is you, you jump, and you can actually grab a higher ledge uh, than you're supposed to by kind of flicking uh, 180 midair. Uh, looks pretty sick. Um, so hopefully we can get it. Uh, saves a good chunk of time because normally you fall down and the water just slowly rises back up and uh, and then you just swim up. Yeah, this, this is um, the newest big skip. I would say almost say it's probably just the newest like actual skip. Um, it ha it was like found just before GDQ. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a little little jump here. Hopefully we get it. Okay, and then we're gonna do another one. Grab nice. this. Now one more jump. <gasps> no. Please let me up. 
Oh, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that jump's actually kind of hard too because it's like uh, you gotta like thread the needle in between the. You have to jump really it. early, and you can't really yeah. be sprinting when you do it. But yeah, that's that skip is really nice. It skips it skips a lot of waiting that you would otherwise have to do. So very yeah. happy about that one. It, it's basically an auto scroller skip, which is always always nice. Uh, it's our last heater that we have to do. The very last one. Yep. You cannot break the lock on this door coming up if you don't do this first. You're far too cold. You have to sit in front of this heater or else you can't do it. So this is actually one of the last levels where we have to uh, dodge an enemy. Uh, it's not going to be too difficult, uh, you know, especially on story. Um, a lot of this level is just... Uh, you know, good movement, b-hops, and I'm um, going to be navigating through some uh, some vents here. We got our good pal Rennick hanging around. Hang Rennick and Trots are just hanging around. We love those guys. I uh, Yeah, especially uh, Rennick's design. Um, if, if any, I know we were skipping the cutscenes, but everybody saw that earlier. The the, the monster, the space boots, just like a giant head. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's Rennick, uh, who was was I guess our boss. Um, I love his design. It's it's it's. Oh awesome. yeah, it's super cool. It's a shame we don't get to see him more. But yeah, Rennick is like really really cool. I mean, try all of them actually look very cool. They're all pretty unique in the way that they're designed because they're they're designed to look super, you know, amalgamation of like body parts and and, and flesh. So uh, they're all, they look very cool. Um, we're gonna let we're gonna let this guy run by a little bit here, so we don't actually. Like, Jump into him and die. Stop up here. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes getting that, through like little yeah. crouches are just so. The hitboxes are a little weird. That one in particular is really awkward to get through. And on more vent crawling, we love some vent crawling in our video games. Oh yeah. Which like by the way, like we see these a lot in games and movies, like the vents don't really support human weight like that. <laughs> that's uh, that's not usually how it works. <laughs> Crawl through here. There's a tiny little optimized jump, uh, kind of like what we showed off earlier. We talked about getting, uh, just finding just before the run here. Um, Shark Hat also found a little optimized jump here, where instead of doing two jumps that take time, we're going to do one jump by jumping like this and grabbing onto this early instead of having to nice. climb up the little little thing. And it's trots. Yeah, like, like we said earlier, whenever you do a climb animation, you can't do another one for like two or three seconds. So uh, that actually saves way more time than it looks. Because normally you climb up and then you just, you can buffer the input, but you just sit there until the game decides to let you uh, <laughs> go up there. Nice, no hard land uh, camera here. Uh, it's really easy to get that in this area. The, the hard um, land camera here actually saves time because it, it, it stops you from being slowed down going through the water, so you can jump and slide all the way to where you need to go to. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, you, I, I, I always try to avoid it because you can't, it, it kind of makes this part slower here going up the stairs. Yeah, going up the stairs because it like messes with your camera angle. Yeah. I, I definitely feel you on that one. Um, but now we're approaching the, you know, let's say about the last like 20% of the game or 15% of the game. Um, the whole mission here, so you just missed it, but we were supposed to pick up some insulin. Um, a very missed opportunity for the game, I would say, is whether or not you pick up that insulin actually doesn't matter at all. Um, because you're supposed to bring it... Hello? Uh, you're basically supposed to bring it to Roy, uh, who's in here. And this is where I was talking about. This is very unrealistic. Like I said, speaking as a diabetic, this is not how this happens. Just, just so we're all aware, you don't die without a day without your insulin. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, and the worst part about this is Kaz technically could have the insulin right here, but he doesn't even try to use it. Like, he just kind of, he says, it's over. Like, he goes, he, he kind of, <laughs> he just, with gloves on, feels for Roy's pulse. He says, can't feel it. And he's like, ah, he must be dead. <laughs> like, not, uh, that's not how that works. Let me tell you guys that. Let me just be honest here. <laughs> that's not, don't do that. Yeah, I was a bit surprised too because on the second playthrough, glitch hunting and stuff, I realized that I, I thought you had to pick up the insulin, um, but the game just lets you skip it. Um, it. There might be an achievement for it. I actually don't know if you grab it, but it does not change the cutscene at all, to my knowledge. He just mm -hmm. doesn't. He, does, he doesn't give. He doesn't inject him with it, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Um, but that what we we're talking about earlier is a Roy skip. It would be right here on this bridge. I'm not going to do it because it's just not going to work. 
um, but essentially what would happen here is if I walked onto this shimmy over here backwards and I could trigger the bridge to actually lower like it's about to when I crawl over it like this part right coming up here the bridge you would instead be standing and you would avoid this whole stop uh, you would be stopped here for a second but you'd be running you could run across this whole thing but the problem with it is that this second half right here would not actually have any physical hitbox except for one little invisible wall right here and you would need to jump over it and land onto the other side uh you not even land but you have to get pushed right into the correct spot to trigger the checkpoint right here um and if you don't get it uh you get set back all the way to the beginning and it is very very hard to do yeah and the best part is uh if you miss it the checkpoint puts you at the uh before you even get on the bridge anyway so you gotta do the monkey bar and the shimmy to try it again <laughs> It's not great. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we you've probably seen it a little bit in this run so far, but uh, with any of those uh, shimmies, those prompts where you have to hold W to go into them, um, as long as you're not actually holding forward, you won't go into them. So if you hold sideways or backwards, then uh, you can kind of just walk past them sometimes, which is pretty neat. And this is Roper. He's a nice guy. He's actually one of the few monsters that doesn't really try to kill you. He kind of grabs you a little bit, but we kind of avoid that. So he's actually just chilling. And conveniently, yes. he has the key we need right here. It's all right, Pop. Yes, they're, uh, the, the whole plan here is they're trying to uh, flood the pontoons, which is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, one of these things that helps it like stay, the, the whole rig stay afloat. So they're trying to flood the front one so that um, the rig will stabilize because currently it's uh, it's sinking. Switches it manual. So, um, yeah, that whole aspect of the game reminds me of Dead Space a little bit, actually, just going around the ship trying to fix everything. Um, which is kind of funny, but uh, yeah, so that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, unknowingly flooding uh, where Brody is. Uh, Back to Finley. Rip. Yeah. Bro, like, <laughs> we're like, hey, Finley, isn't he down there? And then Finley's like, no, he's right, gone, dude. You're good. Like, you just do it. <laughs> She's like, let it rip, bro. He's not in there anymore. Oh, come on, and so we do it. And, and you it get works. to the last level, you get a call. Yeah, he's in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the whole thing. And you'll see that coming up actually in the next five minutes. We're going to go, well, I guess maybe longer than that. We have the whole Renick chase sequence. But we're going to get to Finley, and she's going to be like, he was in there the whole time, bro. I goofed. And we're like, bro, like we've done one thing. We have, we have to see one time about one thing. Yeah, the, yeah the, the end of this game is honestly uh, pretty sad. <laughs> um, obviously, we're skipping all the cutscenes and stuff, but like I said, definitely recommend giving this game a shot. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a very, very good game. Very well made, and like I, like, like Shark said, highly, highly recommend playing it casually. Very fun. Oh, I mean, a little small skip we did there. We're going to do another one. I'll, I'll point it out. Um, so there's, there's supposed to be a scripted grab there where you do a quick time event, but if you just crouch while uh, he tries to grab you, it just doesn't work. Um, it's going to be... Same, same exact thing in this level coming up. Uh, so this is the second to last level of the run, Flooded Admin. Um, you know, common theme, we return to a lot of uh, places, but with things a little bit different. So in this case, uh, you know, as the rig is still kind of sinking, there's water coming in everywhere. So we have these uh, uh, swimming sections. Yeah, also, um, you know, epilepsy warning. Uh, there's a lot of flashing lights here that I can't really avoid. We can't really do anything about. There, there's not very many right here, uh, but coming up, there will be a lot. So I, I will try to warn again before it happens. Um, but there's a lot of flashing red lights when we're swimming through a very tight area um, that the game tries to like tell you that you're running into like the, the big demon monster thing. There's the crouch to skip that there. Uh, so th this level has a lot of out of bounds that you can do, but unfortunately we have not made a way, uh, found a way to make any of them fast yet. Um, so we're uh, we're gonna be trying to speed this up a little bit uh, by well, actually by playing on story because uh, you also have more air on story. On standard, you would drown if you tried to do this, but uh, on story, you can just make a beeline straight to the end without having to come up. Uh, but yeah, a little bit later, there there is a way to go out of bounds and then uh, kind of use the the water out of bounds, these like water planes or boxes or whatever to like swim back and then, you know, use a shimmy to clip back in bounds. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's way slower than just going inbound, so we're not gonna do <laughs> it. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping we work some of those things out a little bit uh, at some point. But, yeah. you know, like like we said, the game's only been out for like less than a month, I think. So it's very time to, to figure it out, yeah. 
and we've, been, we've been working hard to like you know find what we can in it and you know make it as fast as possible because this was originally a very linear game and now with like all the skips we put into it, it it's added as you as you guys can tell um with all the jumps that i've had to do twice or three or six times is that it's not very easy um what like looking at a run like this you know uh doing it in a marathon is very different than doing it uh when you're doing runs right because a lot of those jumps the all the runners will sit there for like five hours miss one jump and reset constantly that's like kind of what we do um so when you're doing it in a no reset fashion you get to kind of see what it's like to sit there and and attempt it over and over and over um so epilepsy warning i will say flashing lights strobing lights coming up now so if you are sensitive to you know photosensitivity please look away because it's going to happen a lot right here um i will say when it's done because it just kind of spams the screen here with it It's about six uh, or so flashes, I think. Yeah, something along those lines. And we should be out of an hour. All right, you're good to look at the screen again. Uh, that is very disorienting. It's a good thing the game autopilots you through it because we w you would get lost so easy yeah. in that if you did not get autopiloted through it. It is so bad. It's very disorienting. Oh yeah, Renick's back again. Here. Yeah, he's gonna last for a long time. Easier to hang out. Hi, Renick. It says press shift to run, but I wouldn't exactly call what we're doing running here. You ever try to uh, run through water? It's not easy. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, considering that, he's he's doing pretty good. Yeah, this is way faster than I'd be going. Uh, we're going to have a scripted grab here. This one we can't avoid. I'm just going to cut free here. See you later, Rennick. Now he dies. We don't yeah, get to see Rennick very much. Too. Yeah. I, I like all the times he does appear, though. He's he's great. Super, yeah, he's a super cool enemy. Yeah, that part there, you got to be a little bit careful. Uh, I think it's if you mash too fast, uh, you have to end up doing the quick time event twice. Oh, Jesus. I, have, I oh, think we never Jesus. had that issue, but uh, eventually I'll probably have that issue. Fuck? I started just delaying it a little bit because it started happening to me, but God, I don't know. Dude. It's weird. <laughs> uh, now we're uh, up on the last level of the game. And it's where we find out that Finley goofed. Just a little bit. Then they did a little bit of silly goofing. Yeah, so we can skip one of the cutscenes here. Uh, th there's not very many unskippable cutscenes in the game. Um, two of them are uh, talking to Finley for some reason, like towards the very end of the game. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we're, we kind of just chill here for a bit. Uh, basically, she's saying, oh, well, you know, I thought he was going to be out in time. And then they get a call from Brody, and he says, well, I'm not, actually, uh, so rip. Um, yeah, he's basically just on the phone like, hey, guys, I'm still down here. And we're like, oh, that's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little awkward. He, he takes it pretty well. He's kind of like, hope you guys get out sort of, sort of deal, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, at this but, point, though, it's like everyone's kind of, except for Kaz, everyone's kind of accepted that you're not getting off this thing. Um, and it doesn't, it's not until the very end where Kaz is like, ah, right. <laughs> like, given the circumstances of what's going on here, uh, Finley's idea is she's like, I'm going to blow the whole thing up because there's a whole lot of oil on this thing because it's an oil rig. We're going to blow it up. And it makes sense, honestly. So we got to follow Finlay. We're coming up. There is one big skip still here at the end, which is the Finlay, the Finlay fall slash death warp if I mess up the fall. Uh, we hope at the very least we get the, the death warp because um, it kind of skips running down uh, the this whole leg here uh, as well as we're doing a little jump over this instead of going the way the game wants us to we're just going to climb up here and now hopefully this lineup is kind of difficult because uh, you can't really run and you have to have a little bit of leeway to it so we're going to kind of line up here I kind of put myself back a little bit we're going to jump late and hopefully we got the death warp, we'll take it. <laughs> it's nice. better better than not getting it at all. Um, it loses about eight seconds to get it this way. If you mess it up and don't get the death warp checkpoint, you lose a lot more time than that, because you have to do it all over again. But now, we basically death warp to the bottom of this whole area, and we're following Finlay, who's kind of going on a suicide mission. But what we're gonna do is kind of cut through here, which skips a little cutscene that you would normally have to watch uh, with Finlay. And we're going to run over here, and she's supposed to be here getting crushed by some crates, but instead what it's going to be is nothing at all. And we kind of take the lighter from her. And now we're approaching the end of the game with this very bright light. 
Uh, but we still have one tiny little thing we could do if, if we get it. It's it's something that Zarian found where uh, you kind of saw it earlier when I did like the monkey bar skip, but I kind of bounced off of the, uh, you know, whatever this stuff is. Uh, you can do that when you run into it anywhere. It kind of launches you, but we're kind of stuck walking. So we're going to try to do a bounce that will send us forward enough to get us to where we're as close to the end of the game as possible. And bee hopping is just faster, so we do have to do it. So we're going to hopefully get a good bounce here. If not, not the end of the world. Oh, no, I bounced. We're, we'll give it one more try. We're right here anyways. All right, not too bad on that one, actually. Yeah, got, got a bit of speed, yeah. Kind of risky doing that back-to-back -back like that, actually. I could have died. <laughs> I did not even mean to bounce into that one. I'll, I'll keep it a buck with you guys. I don't even know how that happened. But now we're coming up at the end of the game. Uh, we're basically, I would say, holding W, but we're also jumping. Just to get to the very end here and light the lighter and end the run. We, we chose The game technically ends afterwards. Uh, at the end of a cutscene, but instead we decided to end the run here because this is really the last thing you do. Otherwise, you have to sit here and do nothing for like three minutes. So we decided yep. to end the run right here uh, when we drop the lighter. So I will call time here in just a moment. Uh, it'll be after we get a big flash of light after we drop the lighter. So we're going to drop it and then I will call it. So it'll be in just a few seconds here. I'm probably more like 10 seconds. As soon as we basically fade to black after this big bite uh, blast. And time. Sorry, anyway. Um, perfect. Okay, not bad. Uh, honestly, uh, fun run. I, I thank you, thank you guys for having me here, and thank you, Shark, by the way, for commentating. Uh, it was a lot of fun to have you. Um, this one still wakes the deep any percent. Uh, like I said, this is uh, this one is very new. So uh, I'm happy with, you know, how it went, considering, you know, this is the first time it's ever been shown at a GDQ anything. Um, this is its first showing in general. Uh, me, Shark, Zarian, uh, you know, Spicy, all of us uh, have been putting a lot of work in to to make this run where it is today. And, like you know, it's still very hard and we still have a lot more stuff to be found. So um, I do appreciate everyone watching. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm Captain Ezekiel. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Captain Ezekiel. I am going to do a little bit more world record grinding for this game, but otherwise I'm primarily known for speedrunning uh, horror games like Resident Evil. So if you're interested in Resident Evil 7, specifically Madhouse, you know, knife only type things, I'll be doing that very soon. So make sure to check me out uh, and Captain Ezekiel on uh, Twitter as well. And make you make sure to check out Sharkat87. Also a gamer, very good at this game. Very good at Dead Space games. Check them out on Twitter and Twitch as well. Um, and thank you, uh, Ek and GDQ, as always, for having me and putting up with me as much as you guys do. Yeah, thanks, Ek. Thanks for having me as well. Thank you both for that run. Uh, before we do go, does anyone have anything else they'd like to add on in? Uh, check this game out. Play it casually. It's really fun. And then if you want to speedrun it, join the Discord. It's linked on the uh, SRC page. Yep. All righty. Well, thank you both very much. That was a fun run. Uh, if you did enjoy it and want to watch more like that and other games, you can find Captain Ezekiel somewhere in Twitch chat. I think it's linked there. Anyway, thank you all for watching this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. We are a bi-weekly horror hotfix. If you like the horror block, we're here every two weeks. We'll be back in about two weeks with more spooky games. I've been your host, Dicus. Uh, I do run a lot of these shows and put them together. I run a lot of games myself. Uh, so if you ever just want to know how I run these, feel free to ask. I'm somewhere on the screen. You can find me there. Uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. Before I do go, I just want to say for all GDU Hotfix stuff, you can find more information at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix for more info on all the weekly shows and weekend specials. Anyway, have a wonderful rest of the day or night, and take it easy.